Welcome, episode one of Dummy Smart, where we're here to talk about everything nerd and pop culture. I am Spatula Steve. Some of you may know me from the UFA podcast. Some of you might know me in real life. Some of you not at all. Here with me today is my co-host, Zero. What up? It's your boy AF to the Z. That's right. Dirty mind, dirty mouth, dirty room, bada boom. What's happening, guy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're a little late to the game here, you know, seeing that this is episode one, and obviously we have missed a lot of shit. Oh, God. Every time I want to start something <laughs> like this, I've always been, and I'm like, let me go ahead and formulate my thoughts and take notes and stuff like that, and then something else will happen. <laughs> All right? <laughs> yep, pretty much that's how it is. Life, life grabs us by the balls. All right, so uh, before we get started here today, uh, just maybe give you all a little insight on us, you know. Um, as you can tell from me, my favorite project, sitting right behind me. Got into it a little late in the game, but once season one came out, read the comic. I fucking love that shit. This is the, this is the show right here. Yeah, what are you, what, What's your top right now? Uh, right now, my top pussy. Anyways, uh... <laughs> 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 Boom! Episode one monetization okay. out the window. There we go. <laughs> listen, listen, we listen. We had the reel that was twenty nine seconds. Right. And we count when we went live. We're longer than fifteen seconds. Right. We still be good. Right. At least according to YouTube guidelines. Uh. All right. <laughs> oh man. Well, to be perfectly honest, it's like uh, as far as like nerd stuff goes, man. Uh, like I'm definitely, I'm definitely uh, digging Invincible right now. But my favorite thing and what I've really, really been waiting for is The Boys. I've dude, like, like in fact, you want something interesting about The Boys? All right. So uh, during like season three, I want to say, or is it season two or season three, we had like Soldier Boy, right? And they showed that video. Right? They showed they, they showed that commercial of him singing the song rap, singing the rap part to Rapture. <laughs> so they're kind of like said Subarus, da 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 da, da right? <laughs> and the whole video is on YouTube, like the whole like the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? If you go on YouTube and you look up that song. Like the actual video for the song, there's a bunch of people talking about. Yeah, man, Soldier Boy did. You say she did Soldier Boy justice with this one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the thing I love the most about it is that it's like an inside joke when it comes to like the YouTube comments or anything boys related. Anytime propaganda about propaganda or fake commercials or whatever, and people in the comments will act like it's just legit, like dead ass. So. I think that's one. I think that's. I think that's fucking dope. Like, yeah, I was gonna uh, say their promo. Their promo is top tier for how yeah, they make. Yeah, the promo like is top tier, commercial. and their fan base and their fan base is like fucking like, it's fucking godlike. Yeah, you watch like, those promos like it's like you feel like you're watching a real life commercial, and it's like these, yeah, these, they really exist. And I get them about sevens though. Hell no. It's funny because I have. I literally have gold sneakers. Like they light up and stuff. I use those. For uh, my cyberpunk cosplay, and I was wearing them like uh, during uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know, you know what I'm saying? I was working, I was working, uh, working the job there, and somebody came at me sideways talking about, "Yo, my dude, is that them Trump twelves, bro?" I'm just like, uh, <laughs> those shoes are so ugly. <laughs> oh man! All right. So let's get started here. Uh, before we get into too many, too many other subjects, uh, we have something a little past yeah, year that happened this my month. Brain, my brain is just going everywhere right now. Like, uh, yeah, we did. We did have something that uh, shattered the anime community earlier this month. Oh yeah, uh, Akira Toriyama passed away. Rest in peace, um, baby. Brain complications. Rest in peace. March first. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace to the goat. Uh, I was supposed to be like, uh, what the fuck. I'm trying to remember what the exact thing was, but it was March like first. it was it, 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 it's like it's like the blood in your brain 
like starts filling up like a pocket or some shit like that. And I guess they didn't catch it in time or something. I mean, yeah, I know sometimes sometimes it could be treated by simply draining it. Well, other times it's like, oh yeah, really, do nothing about that. Yeah, I mean, there was there was somebody coming out saying that he had enough Dragon Ball material written ahead of the way that yeah. we're still going to see some of his work for years to come. Um, oh yeah. But man, you know who Kira Toriyama's kicking it right now with? Chitaro Ishinomori. If you know who that is. Yeah, yeah, it rings a bell. I can't think of the projects right now, but like, oh, trust said, me. like you that said guy, before, everything else is in the head right now for the show. <laughs> that guy, listen, that guy, that guy's a part of your childhood, whether you realize it or not. For example, you ever hear of Kikiner? That's not ringing any bells. Mm. I'm pretty sure you've never heard of Cyborg Zero <laughs> Zero Nine. That I have heard of. I don't think I. Okay, we're getting warmer. Now, what's a show with a team of people with powers that everybody loves? Power Rangers. Who do you think made up Super Sentai? That guy. He's part of everybody's childhood. Was you and, and, and then a bunch of people don't know who he is. It drives me nuts. Meanwhile, my dumbass, I buy like expensive toy belts from Japan and then I put them on and do fucking dumbass poses and shit in my underwear. All right, like <laughs> gotta be honest, it's been a while since I've seen any of the Power Ranger stuff. So like that's why it's not oh, yeah, of course, belts. But... it's been it's been decades, guys. <laughs> nah ma'am, it's funny because I was on the internet the other day. Well, so I'm on the internet every day, but uh I finally resaw the moment in Power Rangers that made me stop watching Power Rangers is kind of a traumatic story, but I'll tell you. All right. See, well, I was about 13, I was like 13, 14 years old. So, yeah, like, I'm not a, I'm a kid, but I'm not like a kid kid, right? So there's certain things that I was privy to that, uh, well, I mean, you're going to find out one way or another. It ain't that what talking about. Of course, they're going to know what intercourse is by the time they hit fourth grade. They got the Discovery Channel, don't they? But for the most part, it's like, all right. So you know how they, you know how they are on these shows. They always got some slick shit to say. And whoever, uh, like, whatever they, they're talking to, like, if it's like a clock monster, you'd be like, it's out of town. It's out of, you're out of time, guy. Or, or like it's a, or, or it's like, if it's a freaking, uh, it's a video game monster, be like, it's game over for you, pal. They was fighting a chef monster, a chef monster. You know what I said to this man? I shit you not. They go, we're gonna toss your salad. And I was just like, yeah, I'm done here. <laughs> I'm done here. I'm done here. <laughs> oh man. All oh. right. So uh let's get into it. <sighs> Movie trailers. Deadpool and Wolverine. I know guys were a little late, but we have to talk about it. Of course. We have to talk about it. It's Deadpool. And it's Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. Now, in the trailer, there are quite a few things that people have spotted out over the the last few weeks. The first and most big one was Heavy spoilers. The, yeah, heavy, <laughs> heavy spoilers. Heavy spoilers if you have not watched the trailer. Um, speculation is that in one part of the trailer, some very quick-eyed fans have spotted out a reference to Dr. Doom. Oh. Doctor, we're not getting Dr. Doom in that movie, bro. I don't think we are, but I seen the scene in question, and the character is very Doom esque. I mean, the if, thing that throws me off is if we have Dr. Doom in that movie, real talk, it's got to be Julian McMahon, and he has to die in that movie. Yeah, or you know, it could just be a, a teaser reference to what's to come with him, you know. Yeah. We do know he's going to go through the multiverse. We do know that he, they, they did say that this was going to be a Deadpool kills movie. Yeah. 
and so, it's it's him killing the Fox universe. So maybe if it is, yes, like one of the older dooms, and okay, yeah. I can see that. Good chance of that. Yep. Maybe yep. maybe a different reality version of the character that maybe is more in line to the comic as an Easter egg. We'll see what comes. Yeah, man. Because the thing is, I know I see those set pictures and stuff, and from the trailer you can see they're fighting in front of a 20th century Fox logo. What is funny though? Simpsons called it. Yeah. Yep. Simpsons call everything, man. Dude's a time traveler. The other big news coming out of this movie is the villain Cassandra Nova. Do you mm. know much about Cassandra Nova? Actually, no, I don't. Feel free to educate me on Cassandra Nova. Cassandra Nova is the twin sister of Professor Xavier. And oh, few, I know who that is. The few origins, I think, throughout the Marvel comics, or maybe that is the only one. Um, there's so much out there, guys. Please bear with me. Yeah. Uh, but apparently Xavier in the womb just sensed the evil from Cassandra Nova and had broken her down to the cellular level. And over time, she had attached, her, had attached herself to a wall and slowly rebuilt herself. And, yeah, basically came back and started kicking ass. A very less complicated version of her origin. Uh, really evil. Uh, big character. Should be a good villain. Um, could will also be another X Men inside the MCU. It's another another big mutant character coming in. Bet money Deadpool has sex with her, <laughs> or has some kind of crush. That would be very Deadpoolish. Um, definitely expect the sexual jokes out of Deadpool on that one. Well, of course. Maybe uh, he won't want to hit a woman joke. I mean, well, I mean. Mm -hmm. Not like the other lady coming back, so... Uh... Uh, the other thing now with the new rumor mills coming out of this movie. There are Wolverine variants. So what I think it's going to be... Because have a, what if they have a bunch of different people be Wolverine? That's what I think there could I be. Hugh Jackman and Deadpool killing a bunch of Wolverines. The big That's speculation the is one of, the, one of the fan casts was uh, Patches. And that Daniel Radcliffe was actually yeah. going to be the Patches version of Wolverine. Okay, okay. Listen, I think Daniel Radcliffe would be a perfect Wolverine. He, he could be good. I mean, especially after watching build. that movie he was height. in. Uh... He's got the height, he's got the build, and he's got the act, he, he's got the acting chops. I no, he does. Perfect. Guns I Akimbo kind of kind of set him up for that role. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm trying to explain to, like, like I'm trying to explain to my friend, my I'm trying to my friend uh, Dirt. Which that's what I call him, you know what I'm saying? Derp Jedi as he used to go. He changed his moniker to some like Viking sounding stuff. I was like, dude, you're black. Stop. All right. <laughs> but anyways. Anyway. But like one thing I really, really can't stand is how people like where is it's 2024. All right. We have the internet. You can look up someone's entire career. And watch anything they've ever done, like professionally, in seconds. We can't typecast no more, bro. We can't. We can't typecast. Like, I understand it in the 80s and 90s. Like, if I really wanted to watch a movie starring somebody that I know from another project, I had to go out, find that movie, uh, make sure the blockbuster got it, rent it, bring it home, watch it, rewind the tape, bring it back. I mean, but nowadays we got, come on, we got no excuses now. Netflix, Netflix, Hulu. Paramount Plus, Max, freaking R, matey. R. <laughs> you know what I mean? Got no excuses no more. So I've got to see way more of Daniel Radcliffe than just fucking Harry Potter. You know what I mean? But then you try to talk to certain people about it and their, their brains just stuck. They're like, oh, you know, like, motherfucking never seen Tusk. Motherfucking never seen Guns of Kimbo. No, motherfucking never seen like any of these other movies this guy's been in. Where he's playing completely unhinged characters, all right. Like just the first time I see him like this, I was like, "Yo, that nigga look like Wolverine, bro." You know what I mean? <laughs> like for real, for real. Speaking of, I still have I got a homeboy on my Facebook. He still refuses to admit the Batman was a good movie, just because Robert Pattinson's in it. Oof. 
we're gonna get to that though. I, I do want to. I do have right, a we'll get to that. section we'll get to here that. for the Batman movies. All right. Um, there is one more thing about the Deadpool Wolverine movie we got to cover, and coming out of the rumor mill the past few weeks. Uh, we knew about a month ago that Henry Cavill had signed with the MCU in a mystery Ooh. role. Everybody was speculating. He's Hyperion. He's going to come in a century. He's going to he's going to be Captain Britain. Oh, they cast him for Doctor Doom. If he was Sentry or Hyperion, that'd be a smack to the face to, 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 to James Gunn. It and would I'm be. I'm all for it. it. It would be, but me personally, I don't really want him to get typecasted. Yeah. I think Henry Cavill... I really is... wanted him to be Captain Britain. Yeah, yeah, and that's what he wanted to play, too. He wanted to play a British character. You know, he wants to play a character that's a little more in tune to his roots. So you know why? He could be a little more naturally himself you know why? in the role. Because he tried to sign that James Bond role, like, yo, let me get that. I mean, but you know who else is shooting for that role? Tom Holland. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I did Tom Holland. I'm Bond. James Bond. But like, Harry Cabo has already pulled the, the Bond, so, I mean, it. I think if, if I mean, he gets yeah, recast, it's just going to be a matter of he doesn't have the time with his projects. Well, the, the, the other thing. See, but now while, while it makes sense though, because like I don't understand, he's man, he was the man from Uncle. But just remember, uh, one bond was Remington fucking steel. So, <laughs> but so. looking forward to that. But yeah, man, but this Deadpool movie is gonna be fucking dope. I'm glad that they stuck with the R rating. I'm glad that the pro- R rated projects they did prior did well enough to justify continuing making R-rated projects. Like, I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I love Doctor Strange and uh, Multiverse of Madness. And even though it doesn't really does earn its R-rating, it could have been a lot worse. Like, like content-wise. Like, 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 like ratings-wise. Right. You know what I mean? So, anyways, uh, going back to Henry Cavill, because uh, yeah. the reason why he was brought up is now after the last, I think, two weeks... Uh, mm-hmm. It has come out that his casting is actually a Wolverine variant and a Deadpool and Wolverine, and it's a one-time cast. Another, which, another which, six-one Wolverine? Come on, yeah, bro. like come on, bro. I uh, we got to no, no, we need a character to hold it down to short niggas like me, bro. Which, if that is the case, I am going to be a little disappointed to a degree. But at the same time, too, like going back to my comment that you know Henry Cavill does have a few projects going on right now. He is trying to develop a Warhammer series. That's true. Um, you know, and he he does he is he is a pretty wanted actor in Hollywood right now. Yeah, you know. I'll give you this: Deadpool better make an epic ass jab at DC once that man hits the stage. Once that man hits the screen, you know, if he is in the movie, he better like there better be a Superman yeah. joke or something that gets thrown yeah. in there that like it has to. Maybe like, he wow, throws like he throws a green rock at him and if realizes it doesn't work and he's like but wrong universe or something you know <laughs> yeah goes, wow another Wolverine that's super man <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> wait, wait, hold on oh, I gotta I got I got I gotta I got I forgot to tell you uh I got a stream deck right <laughs> So I can do stuff like this. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So, I think- so it is though a little concerning to me. You know, I I when I heard Cavill was being signed into the MCU, I thought mm-hmm. there's our next like 15 year like franchise actor. You know, he has the potential to be as big or bigger in whatever character he plays, you know, as long as it's the right character. Yeah. You know, as like Chris Evans or RDJ in their respected roles, you know. And so funny. hearing that it's just a one time cast is like, ah. <laughs> Man, I saw a video. Or I, saw, I don't know what it was. It was like a short way of RDJ. And he's wearing like. He's wearing like a Walmart fucking like like, like Iron Man costume. I forgot like to double take because I'm so used to seeing him in the real costume. The seeing him in like the Walmart costume had me like bugging, right? So, whoa, so what's the armor for? What's the armor for? And it's just like, he was like fried bacon. <laughs> he's still bacon in there. And the grease popping up. He's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but 
He paid his dues. He did his role. He died at the park. He got a Grammy recently. RDJ officially, he does it. He won life. He went from the bottom of the bottom to the top of the top, bro. Like that, 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 that's one of that's one of the people I look up to, bro. It's never too late. Yeah. It's never too late, bro. Never like to make something out of yourself, man. And RDJ is living proof of that. All right. Any other so, thoughts about Deadpool? What was that? Any other thoughts about Deadpool? Or no, I think that's it for right now. I don't know if I just really hope they have some of the people from Loki in it because he's dealing with the TVA. Yeah, I, I would like to see Mobius show up, but uh, the way Mobius, Loki season two ended, I don't know if yeah. we're gonna have Mobius. Agent B thirteen, I mean something. Or, or what was the desk guy? Um uh, I forgot what what desk guy. The assistant, the 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 one that was always with him and he always kept going to and he had the stones in the drawer. Oh yeah, I keep I, I don't know why my dumbass almost called him Carlos, but like that's racist. Like <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one. Like but, yeah. see Deadpool tried to use the stones. But, <laughs> dude, that, no, that episode when he was time hopping and found out this guy was like a this guy was a hardened criminal escaping Alcatraz, like holy shit. Like they really hit. They really hit a home run with that show. Yeah, that that, that show. I saw that show. That show was a, f- Bruh. But yeah, All right. bro. oh yeah. Not to mention, gotta give a shout out to my dog Ob. Yeah. Right, he like. Yeah, you know I mean, that, that 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 was definitely one of my favorite from that final season. That was definitely my favorite character from that season. But all right, let's get let's go to the next topic. Next topic. For all you video game players out there, for many years you have played the Borderland game series. Well, guess what? We're about to get a movie. Didn't even know that this project was working. I just wake up one day, see the trailer, and go, "What?" <laughs> what? I saw the trailer. I saw the trailer. All right, all right, and I know what I'm going to say is going to be out of pocket. So, everybody watching this, yo, feel free to clip this. But the Borderlands movie, which got Kate Blanchett and Jamie Lee Curtis in it, is basically the movie. The movie should be called Old Women I Want to Bang. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. I take a break. Maybe that picture of Morty with like all the chicks around him. You know what I'm saying? That, that's me. That's- the Kevin Hart cast is a little suspect but i'm gonna wait to see the movie and see how it goes maybe him with a little comedy relief makes it yeah okay. i mean yeah. like i think black. it's like jack black is jack black is, is gold all right i saw a meme about jack black saying that jack black is really the god dionysus all right <laughs> that just decided i don't know what you're talking about for a while you've seen it you've seen it, you him, seen it. And him is black like trap yeah, uh, him as Claptrap seems like a really oh, yeah. perfect cast, you know. Like his his personality and the the personality we get from Claptrap in the game. Like I'm just like Jack Black just needs to be himself. Yeah, man. Listen, he's been like the number one funny fat guy in like for like thirty years now. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. This guy showed up. This guy showed up on like this guy shows up in, in a movie in his fucking. And we're rocking a pair of fucking like nut hugging tidy whities. Tom, anybody see my piss? You know what I'm saying? He's turned into the cool uncle. All right, yeah, and he's, <laughs> been, uh, he's just been on fire ever since. I can't think of a bad Jack Black project. I can't. I can't. I mean, I mean, Jack Black's just one of those guys. You either you love him and what he does, or yeah. you're just you don't like. The and then on the right. side, and and then and then makes music on the side, like. You know what I mean, just wonderful, one, one, just a wonderful human being all around. It would break my heart if I met him in person. He was a fucking dick. I would cry. I'd cry like a fucking baby, bro. Yeah, I'm but sitting the here. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Borderlands movie shows a little promise here. You know, it shows that it looks like it takes place in the events of the first game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first set of old hunters going after the vault. We get the psycho bandits. We get everything. They show the wolves and. It almost kind of looks like they try to recreate some of the cutscenes straight from the game, so that we can hey, see it in live action. Which is shit they should do when you, when you make an adaptation of a movie. There's only two ways to do it: is either a, 
fan service, or B, source accuracy. That's it. You know what I mean? Because, like, for example, yeah, I know. Listen, yeah, I understand. We agree with you. <laughs> but she's still hot. Dope. She's still hot, bro. <laughs> By the way, usually dope. Happy birthday. This is my this is my dog from uh, California here. Once again, happy birthday, my dude. I hope you're having a great one. Yeah, man. He's he's tuning in all the way from California. Oh, thank you for the support yeah, on episode one. You know I mean? appreciate thank it. Thank you for the support, man. You'll say this. I salute you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still smash though. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, she's still hot. So I mean, <laughs> or maybe like what up, and the movie. And <laughs> I miss you too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the words of encouragement. Hey, it's, well, hey, they love us, bro. <laughs> oh. Hey, definitely, man. We're uh we're still in the beginning stages, you know, so we're looking for members of the cast, you know. Yeah, yeah man. I'll have... like, if it's, hey, I would nominate I would nominate this guy for real because me and him, we've had some epic fucking like combos like over my streams and stuff. Like we playing video games, sitting in Xbox live chat with this guy or Discord yeah, or something, man. just shooting shit, talking about all kinds of stuff. We could throw him in right now, add him to the group chat. All he's got to do is click the link. <laughs> hey, dope, you want in? I don't know. He might be. I don't know. He might be working. All right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, of course, of course. She, oh, man, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But like, why don't they do some shit like she hey, died at the okay, end? Like, not her daughter comes around with the same name. Oh no, no, we don't. Me and dope here, we'll go back and forth like an old married couple. <laughs> <laughs> We over here saying sick, straight talking shit, but at the end it's just like, oh, why would you do that to yourself, bro? Like, oh, <laughs> you man. come back to this hellhole, like for real? Yeah, I gotta tell you, man, it's expensive down here. <laughs> it ain't what you're used to up there, man. I'll tell you right yeah, now. Man. Five layer, no, five layer beefy cheese burritos, ain't a dollar no more. All right. All right, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Sounds good, dude. I'll have I'll have uh, Andy here get you added into our group so we can work on future projects. Yeah, let me let me go add him. Let me add him to the group. Let me add him to the to the group here. Better than Kentucky, man. What happened out there? I thought everything was nice and cheap. Or are you just getting tired of living so far away? Because <laughs> I'm ready to get out of South, get out of here, out of South Florida, and go to a place like that you know i want to be far away and cheap and have land and my neighbor's not like right next to my house so i just take my wall down and be in their living room this man said kid fuck you yep oh man <laughs> oh all right he's in the chat now perfect uh all right. So, uh, anything else add to the Borderlands movie? Let me move that over here. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah. I get that. True. I guess it gets boring. True. Listen, as much as I hate I hate living in Florida, I don't think I could stand it anywhere else. Dude, why you gonna put me out like that? <laughs> why you gonna put me out like that? Oh, why you gonna put me out like that? It's okay. Shut it's okay. Up. I still gotta watch part two. Oh, shut up. I've still gotta watch part two. That's fine. Yeah. I watched the first one. I gotta watch part two. That's the first one, bro. Maybe one or two months out of the year is annoying. Yeah, you probably get snowed in. <laughs> I'm the wrong. I totally hit the wrong button. All I'm right. To, I'm trying to do one of these. Like, like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nothing else for the Borderlands movie. Let's move on to the next. Oh, that's it. All right. All my old school movie fans. Maybe you grew up watching this movie. 
Maybe you grew up and you watched the cartoon. I remember the cartoon. Do you remember the cartoon? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Beetlejuice. Oh, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. <laughs> Michael Keaton is back as Beetlejuice. Jenna Ortega is reprising the main role. Mm -hmm. uh, taking over for who was it? Was it Christina Ritchie? No. Yes. No, 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 no. Without a writer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My God. It's been so long since I've watched the original. I'm trying to think. The int the the whole trailer was was so nostalgic in the first place, especially when you started hearing that eight foot, seven foot. Um, all right, Jenna the Ortega. The same all right, actress. all right, all right. Let me let me just clear this up right here. Jenna Ortega, who played Wednesday in the uh, Netflix show, Netflix show Wednesday. She, I guess, I'm looking at look at. I'm guessing she's Lydia's daughter in this movie. Yep. So Renata Ryder is back as Lydia Dietz, and Jenna Ortega is playing an Astrid Dietz. So I guess it's safe to assume that's her daughter. Yep. And then Catherine O'Hara is back. You know what's funny? Catherine O'Hara used to be like hella hot, bro. I, I, <laughs> but you know what? We should do an ongoing thing where it's like left of old women that Zero wants to bang. And we're just gonna. <laughs> so, if I was watching at home, let's. <laughs> but uh, it looks it looks good, man. The, from the trailer, it looks like it's gonna be good. I love the reveal of Michael Keaton back as Beetlejuice, where they mm -hmm. have him and he just standing there. On the, <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. back. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that movie. I really can't. That's gonna be. That's going to be great. Listen, I really hope we get a lot more Beetlejuice on the screen this time. I am too, so glad Michael Keaton today. is back. You know what I'm saying? We got to see him come back in two old roles. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, yep. Yep. I was not a fan of the Flash movie, but Michael Keaton was the best part of that whole thing. Of course. Getting to watch him back in the cowl and kick ass as Batman again and do the things he did, it, it, it brought me back to being a kid, man. It brought me back to being a kid watching that first Batman movie and... Yeah, man. And the thing, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> yup. 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 <laughs> like Marie, Marie tomorrow, or something like that. Hell yeah. Oh, add her to the list. Women I want women I want to stick my penis in. Just, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> she right. at the end of the show. Nate, every chick zero said he'd bang and <laughs> You get like a free T-shirt or something. All right. Uh, now we're going to go on to a subject we're probably going to be on for a little bit here. Well, here we go. Uh, unless we have any honorary mentions here we need to throw in. All right. I just want to say one thing about the Flash movie. Okay. I give them this much. They tried. They totally bit off more than they can chew. But I appreciate the attempt. I gave it like a 6 out of 10. I mean... It took them 20 years to make oh, a Flash movie. They well, were trying for the last 20 years to make a Flash movie. Well, yeah, and that's what we got to begin with. All right. Well, consider <laughs> this. They were only working on it for like the past like couple years. First off, there was a hell of a lot of CGI in that movie. Oh, her too. Helen Belita Carter. Let's get it. Just. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yes. Usually Listen. dope. I Listen. agree. There, there was no save. There was no save. There was no save in the Snyderverse, bro. They're already in too deep, bro. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're right. That is a phase. That is a phase three type movie. Listen. That should have been something that should have been way further down the line. There were so many elements from the Flash movie that were missing. Yeah. There were wasted characters that should have never Flash. been used. I don't understand the two Flashes. I don't understand why would you make another Barry Allen? Instead, you could have used this storyline to somehow incorporate Jay Garrick. Yep. Um, which well, I think everybody movie. would have loved to see him on the big screen in a better fashion than what you gave him as. Yeah. Uh, and having a Savitar esque character as the main villain and no reverse. Flash. All right. I have to be honest. Like, I'm not a big Flash fan. Is Savitar like a legit comic character, or yes. is he like made up for the show? All right, no, he is a legit comic character. Yeah, 
Uh, hey. I think his his origin changes depending on which project you watch him on. Um, yeah. Like I watched uh, one. Well, that's reverse, awesome. reverse Flash out of the Rogues Gallery that the Flash yeah. has is probably like one of my favorite of the villains because he's yeah. the most conniving, and no matter what he's the like Flash diabolical. does. He, he will never get rid of him because the guy has stapled himself into the timeline. Everything yeah. that he does is like, how do you put it? Um, it's an event that has to happen. Like yeah. it's going to be there no matter what. So even if Barry kills him, he's going to keep. That was the best thing. That was the best thing about reverse Wasted flash. He wasn't used. Yeah. That was the best thing about reverse flash. Reverse flash has such a, has such a reputation for being such a fucking asshole. You could make up the most ridiculous shit and say he did it, and it sounds legit. Like you remember that meme that was going around where they changed like all like the text bubbles of him talking shit. It was like, yo, remember when you remember when you we had your first kiss and you nutted in your pants? It was me, Barry, jacking you off in the speed of light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just like fuck, because <sighs> he would do it. He would totally do it. <laughs> no, oh, he's not the same as the show, but the show yeah. I, I loved how he was in the show though. I love how hey, he listen, was in the show. Listen, everyone keeps talking about Grant Gustin and you know how he's a great how he's a great depiction of the flash or whatever, but we gotta give it to the real MVP of the show, Tim Cavanaugh, because that oh, nigga was Tom like eight, Kavanaugh. Oh sorry, Tom Cavanaugh, because he was like eight different people on the show, bro. All right. All right, because he was talking was, about the show, and this comment is here. Oh, Godspeed! They did drop the ball on Godspeed. Listen, my favorite, my favorite villain from the show was fucking Zoom. You know what I mean? Zoom was great. Zoom, was no, great. It, it to me, it was still Reverse Flash. Like Zoom was good, yeah. but mm -hmm. Tom Cavanaugh constantly playing that character. I loved how in yeah. depth he got into yeah, that character. <laughs> Plus, he played so many different characters on the show. Sherlock, like, that was my nigga. Sherlock, the French one. Yeah, you know what I mean? it, he was. He really expanded his range on that. show. All right, spoiler alert. All right, I cried when Sherlock died. Yeah, I think right. we're past the spoiler alert at this point because that, yeah, that yeah, was so yeah, many yeah, years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. But like. When buddy, yeah. So when Savitar yes. went and stabbed Iris, and I was like, "Oh no, Iris died!" No, and I was just like, Ugh. "It was me, Sherlock, the entire yeah. time." And just like he took one for the team, bro. Hmm. <laughs> it wasn't Sherlock; it was HR. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It was HR because HR was like because HR wasn't smart, and he was just like. Damn, like, and I remember with the the drumsticks, and everybody was suspecting him to be Savitar, like for half yeah. of that season because of the way yeah. he called uh, Wally. Yeah, and he yeah, called him right. Wallace yeah. or something like that, and he called him the same thing that Savitar did. So that was one of the the speculations who Savitar was until they revealed that nope, it's just another Barry. But yes, usually dope. Godspeed in the comics is is he's next level. It, it, he's a very 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 close second to. Uh, <laughs> To reverse flash for me on my list there of his villains. Well, let's give it a buck. They did my dog Wally dirty though. Yeah, they, did, a little dirty. they, they did increase like... his power though. They no, did no, increase I'm his about, power. I ain't talking about the character, I'm talking about the actor who played him. Yeah. Cause like he comes out as bi and then they take him off the show. Like, are you fucking serious? Which doesn't make sense because a lot of those actors were that way, you know. Yeah, I mean the same thing. Let's be honest, think about it. Like, I don't know about you, but not only did I play football, I was also a theater kid. A lot of theater kids were fucking gay, all right? Like, get over it. They exist. Jesus Christ. Like, whatever. If they don't come knocking on your door, people, let it be. <laughs> Facts. Facts. So, uh, but speaking of the show anyways, I mean, there was rumors for uh, James Gunn's DCU that Grant Gustin and Tom Cavanaugh both want to come back for their roles for the movies. I'm with it. I'm with it too, man. I'm with it. I'm with it all the way. Tom Cavanaugh, even a Mel would love to join, and I, I would like to see Green Arrow on the big screen. Well, you I know, mean, since, since I everything mean, stemmed from Arrow he's, here, I mean, technically he's the Spectre, so I mean, he is, and that's why I try to tell people. I don't know if you watched the the Crisis on Infinite Earths yep, crossover they did. 
I did. When he had died, everybody was saying, like, oh, that's it. He's done. He's never coming back. And I'm like, that can't be true. I have a very hard time believing because I'm pretty well versed in DC Comics. And I know about the, the Spectre, you know. And the thing about the Spectre is he's not very easy to kill. You don't nope. actually kill the Spectre. That's the right-hand vengeance of God. That's yep. how he's written. Yep. He's, he's there. The, he's literally he is literally <laughs> a do sex machina. Yeah. Uh Alan Richardson more for Batman. I Let's after see. I've watched Alan? Rick Reacher, Batman. Yep. <laughs> I didn't have to watch I didn't even have to watch Reacher. Shoot. Fast I like the Titans too. Don't Fast be wrong. X. Just looking at this guy when he like the part when I when they're, when they're in Brazil, right? And he's running up on Dom, and then all the gangsters come out. He goes, hey, hey, that's a nice watch you got there. And he takes out all those thugs without firing a shot. I was like, that's Batman. That's Batman. Well, all the right? thing I like about Reacher is his his uh, deduction skills they show him doing and yeah. the way he does it. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, he could pull a Batman role with that, too. You know what I'm saying? So Everything was- seasoning him for it. Like, James Gunn, if, you're, if you ever see this, there's your Batman. Yeah, if you but, want to do Brave and the Bold, there's your fit. Yeah, but I tell you this right now. If he's going to be in a Batman movie, it has to be a Batman-only project. Because let's be honest, who the hell are you going to find to be Superman next to that guy? Well, All he's right. already got David Cornsweat or, or Cornsweat or whatever. No, 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 no. Don't, don't get me wrong. That guy's definitely going to be a great Superman. But put that man next to out. Imagine Batman just like <laughs> staring down at Superman, just like so you're from another planet, eh? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you know what I mean? think they had him on Titans and he was tall, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. But Alan Richard, like you have to find someone equally as big or bigger to play Superman to be next to him. This guy had that guy has like a godlike physique. All right. Oh, I'm about to see that. Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm wrong. Let me let me uh wait. Uh that was a great, great, great scene. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of it, he's like, you hit me. I didn't hit you, the airbag hit you. <laughs> Spoilers for anybody who hasn't watched Reacher. I'm sorry. Like we should have done that first. Um. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we got a little off topic there. I mean, um, listen, that's what we do out here. We 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 just the, we let yeah. the thoughts flow. We we kind of rolled into the next subject, anyways, because James Gunn DCU was it. That was yeah. the one that we were going to talk about a little bit because you know it's it's a big topic right now. Yeah, Reacher's yeah, a really good show. So the thing is, is like this. James Gunn, he's a fucking genius. So if there's anybody that can pull it off, it's him. All right? Now, I may be a Marvel... I think I think I definitely lean Marvel over DC. I mean... To me, it depends on which which but is production good. company you're it's talking like, about. See, it's like, <laughs> see, it's like DC. It's like DC, right? Marvel... Batman, all right. That's how I roll, all right. <laughs> all right. So, so for Batman, me, all of Marvel, all rest of DC. That's it. That's it for me. I'm sorry. All right. Well, for me, it depends because, like, I like going in the current state right now. Mm-hmm. I haven't really been brushed up much on the newer DC comics. I stopped after Dark Knight's Death Metal. Okay. I wasn't really into. Oh, the turn snap. they took. A lot of shit's happened since then, bro. Right. But the reason being, too, was the Dark Knight's death metal run. Mm-hmm. Like, that whole death metal series was just so over the top. Yep. I read that whole series front to back from when they first introduced, like, the, the Dark Knight characters and, mm-hmm. and the Dark Multiverse. And, and then all the way up to the point with... Wonder Woman flying out of the World Forge and fighting the Batman who laughs and mm-hmm. and uh, Perpetua and oh my God, man! Like I'm sorry, like after that series, Marvel right now in the comic race, just you need to go back to the drawing board. Granted, don't get me wrong, Marvel's top series uh, out of the most current runs right now to me was King in Black by Donny Cates. All right, 
Uh, that was that, 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 that's the symbiote shit, right? Yep, and yeah. it, it, again, front to back, carnage involved. It was about Venom and and Null, and it's what really hyped me up to that one day. That please, we have to see Null on the big screen, and please do it justice. This all has to be R rated. You failed us with the Carnage movie. Don't fail us with this. <sighs> wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. Time yes, out. I said time it. Out, time out. Carnage I, is not. All right, being I'm gonna come through. Listen, I'm gonna come through the unpopular take here. Okay. I, movie. All right, Woody Harrelson just ate up the goddamn C, every scene he was in. Ate it up. Ate it up. Now, mind you, it could have been a listen. Obviously, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's shit that was obviously not going to do. Even though this is supposed, you know, supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, a, a very mature content movie. But it's still, they, they still, they still trying to, like, make money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, I ain't give a fuck about the plot. I just want to see Carnage fuck shit up. And I got that. I got that. I made yeah. a whole video out of Carnage fucking shit up. Now What's let me it? come as the guy who is a fan of Carnage out of the comic. <laughs> I expected it to be no. a lot more gruesome. What? His name is Carnage. His name is Carnage. And when we got a lot of that, like the, the shadow kind of kill scenes and Ooh. Like the smoke and mirror ones where they, they showed that he was doing something gruesome, but they didn't show you the gruesomeness of it. Yeah. it I felt like it really took away from the moment. <laughs> uh, the way they ended it, too, was kind of like, eh. I did like that they kept the trope of Venom being afraid of him. Yeah. You know, that's a red one. Oh, no, 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 no. And he fucking yeah. instantly brings Eddie Brock back out. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not doing this. Like, right there, I'm like, okay, they, 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 they hit a home run with that. But yeah. I needed a little more carnage out of Carnage. I think you know, I think Carnage in that movie went out better than Venom did in freaking Spider Man Three. Yeah, I, I I can't agree with that. I I can agree with that. I can agree. You with know, that. so like, 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 like I I went into that movie not expect like not expecting. I'm not going. I'm not trying to find Citizen Kane with alien symbiotes. All right, I, for me it's a popcorn movie. I sit down. I turn my brain off and just enjoy the guy. I just go for the ride. All right. Yeah, it made sense. For me, it made sense that they didn't, you know, show like full, like messed up, but they show enough that you know what's going on. Like when you see somebody they're getting stabbed, you can see the blade coming out of them and stuff. Yeah, it's not all bloody and gory and thrown across. And of course, suddenly their their uh the wounds are gone, but you know what I'm saying? But let's be honest, that one scene when he holds the guy up against the wall, he's like, please, I have a family. And he's just like, sticks his tongue down his throat. No ditty. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it. <sighs> <laughs> but we got to, you know, getting back to it, like, you know, yeah. um, obviously, so like comic wise, you know, DC. DC takes the cake for me. I mean, if you're talking about King of Black, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved Secret Empire from Marvel. I loved oh, yeah. um, Secret Wars. Um, I love the... I have the Secret Wars poster. Like, you gotta have the four-part poster. Oh. You gotta put them together. Yeah, I got that like right over here on my wall. There's... Oh, my God. The guy, he did an X-Men and Fantastic Four run. I can't think of his name. He's a freaking another really good writer. Oh, my God. Um... <sighs> It's killing me that I can't think of his name right now. Because he redid the, the Fantastic Four run. It led up to Secret Wars. It was all the incursions and... I I wouldn't know. <sighs> I wouldn't know. He's a, he's a big writer, man. But I'll, 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 think, I'll think of it at, when it's too late. But I'm not going to look it up right now. Yeah, man. But I guess, I guess my particular case is just that, like, I go ahead and... Yeah, Civil All good War. Runs. I liked Civil War One. I. I didn't like Civil War Two. So the, here's the thing about uh, Civil Avengers War Two. Avengers vs X Men. Oh my God, I love the Avengers vs X Men. For some of you who aren't very well versed in in the comics or what goes on, Civil War Two is the comic as the reason why Captain Marvel gets so much hate from so many fans. 
the way that she was. I just thought they that, didn't like Brie Larson. No, they don't like Brie Larson. A lot of people don't like Brie Larson either, but that's why a lot of people also don't like the Captain Marvel character. Yeah. Um, there's many things I've heard from people. Some of it was the way she was poorly written. Some of that she was written so good into the role that they had her in the comic that it made people actually hate her. Wow. Um, because it, I believe Civil War II was a conflict between her and Iron Man is yeah. what the Civil War was. Um, so it, a little a little comic history there for some people who don't know, Ooh. who maybe need to understand why there's so much hate to the Captain Marvel character. Uh, also, too, because a lot of it, she was in you know, a lot of her time writing before that and even after she was basically written as a sex symbol mm -hmm. for some of you who don't know, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know how you don't know that. It's not really a surprise. We know how it was yeah. back in the 80s, 90s, yep. and even yep. parts of the early 2000s. Female characters were written for sex symbols, sex cells. Um, Character ever drawn by Jim Lee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Right, if John, if she's drawn by Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane, or 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 uh, uh, damn, can't remember his name. I'll get back to that later, but yeah, Lies. yes, she is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. Yep. yep. All right, so getting back onto the James Gunn DCU, Superman Legacy comes out. I think next year during the summer. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a hell of a cast, man. Uh, rumor reports are coming out about the movie that we're going to have its first connection to a James Gunn movie, uh, that being Suicide Squad. The connection is the blood sport shooting Superman with a kryptonite bullet. We are apparently going to get a news headline in the movie with that. Uh, first thing connecting James Gunn's DCU movie universe. Uh, does that mean we're going to get the scene of blood sport shooting him? I would actually love to see that. So... I thought it was supposed to be a new verse, though. I believe it is, and I think that's going to be carried over. He's going to retcon it some way, because Peacemaker is supposed to be a part of his new universe, too, and they tied the Snyderverse, so I don't know how he's going to work that out. I have faith. Maybe the events of the Flash movie are what changed it. He's going to retcon it somehow. I know that was what their original plan was, was that the Flashpoint movie was going to rewrite the universe. Well, here's another, here's another thing, though, because like, Pe like Peacemaker... Brings up an issue with me the same as they would let's say the Eternals did. Something major just happened like worldwide, and none of it seems to have applied to anything else. Because if you think about it, you got you got like at the end of Peacemaker, they 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 they, they killed like the mother bug or whatever, and all the other bugs right. fucking like die and shit. And they've been infiltrating governments and companies and all this other stuff. So when a bunch of high profile people are ready to drop dead, and then people then you know they do the autopsy, it's like, oh shit, they got these bug things inside of them. Like, that's a lot of implications that so like it's just no 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 you gotta you, you, you just gotta let you gotta flush it down the toilet, bro. I wanna see I have I have a lot of high hope for James Gunn's universe yeah. um because of what he's also announced. Yeah, you know, I like the cast that he has for Superman Legacy. I like the guy he brought in for Guy Gardner. Um, I, I like that he's bringing in Hawker. Like he's bringing in other DC characters that the movies haven't really brought together with Superman yet, and that's what he's trying to do. He wants to give us something fresh. He wants to give us something new. He doesn't want to give us the same shit that we have seen over and over and over that has been butchered over the years. You know, he's trying to keep us from having too many of the same villains. Obviously, Lex Luthor has to be a part of the story. So you have to bring Lex Luthor in in some form of fashion. If he's not the main villain of the first movie, I'm not going to be mad. But if he is like a background villain that we keep getting until he creates his version of the Legion of Doom, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Build it up. Let him cook. Um, having this Superman maybe be already a little established, a little seasoned for the first movie would also save us some time. We don't have to really go Listen, we know origin. origin stories, bro. Right. I, we all know Superman's leg origin. Every legacy character does not need, if he's a, if he's a legacy character, we don't need origin story no more. All right. So that's every, like, like the top, like 10, all right, on either side, don't need origin stories no more. All right. Yeah, exactly. But then, but yeah, yeah, so, but yeah, but like, all right, as far as like Peacemaker is concerned, I mean, 
there's a lot of stuff that have, like I said, all that stuff that happened in Peacemaker. That's going to be a lot of implications. So you mean tell me we're it, living it on be, a planet yeah. where there is somebody that can a X-ray X-ray to people, superhero, super strength, didn't detect any of these people. The world's greatest detective didn't detect any of these people. You know what I'm saying? We also got to remember that the, the Snyder Justice League showed up at the end and they yeah. shadowed Ben Affleck's yeah. Bruce uh, yeah. Batman yeah. and Henry Cavill's Superman. Yeah. And we saw it was Flash and uh, Ezra Miller's Flash and yeah. Momoa's Aquaman there and talking and they're doing the whole joke of the show. Yeah, of him shut talking up, fish, fish. Right. <laughs> um. So, I mean, that's, that's too, I think, is a complication too. It's how are you going to incorporate him with this other Justice League if we know that he showed in his that he exists with this other justice league and yeah, Matt Waller. Right. And so, yeah, you know, there is questions to that, but we'll see how it I plays out. Peacemaker will continue as a separate entity. That's probably not going to be part of the overall thing. For, it's just continue. It just, it's going to be its own site. It's got to be its own site thing. And it's basically, it's basically it's his fuck you to Zack Snyder. Because they basically look, and I take this whole world that you built, and I'm making it an entire fucking joke. Your shit. Better than your shit. Peacemaker I mean, kills so. the Snyderverse. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. <laughs> DC's right. Deadpool kills the Snyderverse. <laughs> yeah, man. But I wouldn't for that. Friggin', uh, but like I said, if it wasn't James Gunn, I'd be like, yo, this is going to suck. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that joke was. <laughs> yeah, that one took me out when I was watching the show, <laughs> and it hurts me because I'm a Green Arrow fan, you know. Yeah. And it's it's like, oh, <laughs> but he had to do it. But again, this yeah. is you know, like for those of you who don't know, like Peacemaker's kind of like DC's answer to Deadpool right now. You know, they're gonna yeah. they're gonna give him the Deadpool treatment. He's gonna make the jokes about the rest of the universe. He's gonna. So you know who they introduce in that show to do that better. And break the fourth wall, also ambush bug. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people can. don't know about ambush bug. You can. You know what I'm saying? In fact, you know what my favorite ambush bug gag is in the original Fifty Two, right? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, this this feels like you know, this probably been going on for a while. Yeah, man, it's been going on for weeks. How many? Like fifty two of them? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. All right. Next topic. Next topic. All right. So, in his universe, he has six movies that were announced that he wants to do. And this is why I'm a little hopeful for his universe. Um, because one of the mainly because of one of them he announced, which tells me that he really is trying to go deep cut into DC Comics. And he is trying to give us something that we have never seen before. The project I am talking about is Creature Commandos. Ooh. Now, I know not many people know about them. Your average goers, Creature nope. Commandos. Who the hell are the Creature Commandos? You want to talk about some deep cut DC stuff. I mean, this is something that the, the hardcore DC fans know. You know, and yeah, it, it's a very interesting project that James Gunn's deciding to do, especially in the beginning of a new universe. Because there is the potential he could do this, and it's a total fail because you, some of your average goers may not be into the Creature Commandos. Hey, listen, um, he made the Suicide Squad relevant, so who better to do it? Let me uh, let me go ahead and pull up stuff for you guys here so that we can, we can go over the Creature Commandos. Speaking of that, I heard that game was so trash. Right. It is going to come up as a television series. All right. Uh, the Creature Commandos, they're pretty much misfits, man. You know, think of think of Doom Patrol, okay? I was going to say, new, is, I was gonna say new Mutants, but yeah. Yeah, you could maybe New Mutants, you know. Uh, for those of you in, more in line with DC entities, Doom Patrol would be a pretty... Pretty close revelation, uh, but New Mutants, yes, you know, as well as there. It's pretty gritty, man. It's pretty gritty. I'm very excited to see it in a show. 
Yes. This is the character I always thought he should have played. Who? Lobo. Oh, yeah. Momoa as Lobo. Always, Man, always, honest, always should have been. If that Aquaman was not Aquaman, it was Lobo. All right. Granted, I did like his take on Aquaman. I do like I his did, take on but Aquaman. That definitely Aquaman was, was, that was Lobo all day. Come on. Yeah. Hey, my main man, what's happening? <laughs> like, come um, on. Other Speed projects. it up. Have you seen what they've done with Lobo in the comics recently? What did they do with him? Oh, they I, gave I him I a did. Green Lantern ring. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Lobo <laughs> is a freaking Green Lantern. Like, what? Well, yeah, he what? had his redemption arc, so, you know, I could see it. I could see I it. I guess. I guess. I mean, let's be honest. Anti-heroes make more money than villains, so. Yeah. I mean, he's, okay, he's Venom. become, if I'm not mistaken, he's become like an honorary member to the Justice League, you know. Of course. I think after the events of Dark Knight's death, Michael have brought him more in, on the side of the heroes now. You know, like if you've watched, if you've read the Death Metal series, you know that Lobo is kind of more in tune now with the heroes. He fought side by side with them. Of course. Um, we're going back into the the upcoming movies here. Um, Peacemaker season two, we already know that's coming. Um, but Booster Gold is possibly going to make his debut. Who's playing Booster uh, Gold? I don't think there has been an announcement for a Booster Gold casting. He has announced that he wants to do a Booster Gold project. Um, I was just say, but hear me out. Hear me out. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion is going as Guy Gardner. Nathan Fillion's Guy Gardner? All right. You know what? I'm good. All He's right, Guy good. Gardner in Superman Legacy. All right. All right. Bet. Bet. But people oh, did man. say that would have been a good one because you could have put him as. as yeah, because I remember Booster hearing Gold that he was actually uh, trying to like, he was trying to push for that role like a long time ago. Um, another project that I know he wants to bring out is the Waller series, uh, which I'm all for. I, 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 I could I could watch a series on Amanda Waller. Hell yeah. You know, especially if we get some of the like deep cut Suicide Squad story, uh, Suicide Squad stories, that would be really good. Like you know, see Maxwell Lord go against them and everything like that would be would be pretty interesting. And he wants to give us Swamp Thing again, which I have to say, right. I was very heartbroken <laughs> to watch a whole season of Swamp Thing to find out the show had been canceled. It was the most DC thing ever to happen. That we get this beautiful project in Swamp Thing. Warner Brothers. <laughs> Warner uh, Brothers. Warner Brothers. And it's man, nothing new. That's it. Warner Brothers has been like that since the beginning of time. Think of all the great shows they canceled. They canceled Batman Beyond. They canceled Static Shock. They canceled fucking... Uh, uh, Actually, I don't think I was at Birds of Prey, but yeah, that, that, that show did suck. I mean, uh, <laughs> like I think the reason why lanterns don't carry more than one ring is because of the brightest day, blackest night storyline, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you have not read that storyline, read it. That did Kyle Rayner have all the fucking rings? You just I mean, god, or something like that. Like, yes, I think it was Kyle Rayner, and he became the White Lantern. That's yeah. why, because they they ultimate to something bigger, so. I think that's why everything got pushed in there, Nathan Fillion. I'm upset. Would have been better as Booster, in my opinion, especially after Blue Beetle. Wait, wait, wait. That's something. That's something yes, right? I believe he is. There's something I do. I, I do have to talk about though, because uh, um, so you mean so all the colors come together, and because the white. Lantern. Yeah, all of them mm -hmm. went together. They did the White mm -hmm. Lantern, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to feel about that? <laughs> well, if you if you've read the Blackest Night storyline, uh, the Black Lanterns are the Lanterns of Death, Necron. Um, <laughs> and you got to remember that all the Lantern properties Avatar. have their avatars. No, no, I mean, listen, the actual reason is because it's supposed to be like the colors out of a prism. Because well, the emotional spectrum, in, yeah, yeah. So the entire spectrum of colors would be a neutral color, which is white, 
and the absence of such light would be black. Right, but what it was was right. when they it wasn't. I don't think it was all the rings. I think it's I, when well, they I harness want, the power. I just want an excuse to play I'm black, y'all from CB4. Right. So I think it's really what it is. Is it's more of the avatars of each spectrum. Yeah. yeah. You know, because the orange one is greed, and it has it has its avatar. I don't think Larflees was the one, but that's that's my favorite Lantern Core, by the way, is orange because yeah. Larflees is great. Larflees yeah. is great. Everything is mine. It's all mine. Like he has no <laughs> Lantern Core, by the way, people. He is the Lantern Core. He has all the rings. His Lantern Core is literally all constructs that he creates. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm you have for the yellow. Listen, and speaking of, like oh, another show, the Green Lan the, the CG Green Lantern show they used to have. That show was yeah. freaking dope, bro. I don't know why they canceled that shit. Just like everything DC, man, it all gets canceled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we need we need a Green Lantern prop project, man. And it, it's been overdue. I get what happened with the Ryan Reynolds project, but I mean that one went down because they decided to go parallax. Wasted storyline, wasted characters at DC Warner Brothers thing right there. Yes, Jessica Cruz would be a dope, dope addition into the universe. They were supposed to do the Lantern show and they were supposed to have Simon Baz, Jessica Cruz. Like it was supposed to go around all the other lanterns so they could focus on um oh my god, it just left my mind. The two main ones. Um John Stewart. John Stewart and uh the main lantern. Uh <laughs> The main Green Lantern of them all that we get. Yeah, John Stewart. The guy no, that was John my, uh, Stewart, the one that Ryan Reynolds played in fucking. I, I, I'm messing with you, man. I'm just, you see what I was going? I was like, I yeah, get where you're going. going. I get where you're going. Uh, but it was John but Stewart. Yeah, and... man. Forget, uh, damn. How the fuck did we forget Hal Jordan? Yeah, Hal Jordan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, it's like, it's on the tip of my tongue and it wouldn't come out. <laughs> But yeah, it's but the, the movies were supposed to focus Hal Jordan and John Stewart. There was going to be mention of them in, you, the, in the show. The way, that did was you watch come. the uh, Justice League, like the whole thing? What, the Snyder Cut? No, no, I said the Bruce Tim Justice League, like the show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When they're fighting, when they're fighting the time that the, the time traveler guy, yep. And then, like, John Stewart just poof and turns into like Hal Jordan. <laughs> and and he was like, "What the hell, goes How Jordan Green Lantern Corps? Trust me, I already know everything that happened. I'm all caught up." And then poof, turns back to John Stewart. And like, "Yo, what the heck just happened?" <laughs> but, See, a lot of people say Idris, but knowing Idris, he he said I remember him talking about how like he wanted to dial it back when it came to like doing these comic book movies and stuff because. Like those, there's a lot because it's always like, because like you don't just sign up for one project. You know what I mean, you're 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 committing to like three, four, eight projects and stuff, and it gets in the way of other like stuff. You know what I mean, yep. so I doubt that he would want to do it, but I'd be all for it. Personally, I think my fan, my perfect fan cast would be more Chestnut for John Stewart. You know, I would, I would like for the guy who played Diggle on Arrow to finally get his chance to harness a green, uh, Green Lantern ring. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I like, I like him. I like him too. I, I was really hopeful throughout the show and everything like that we'd get to see it, and we never did. Uh, I mean, come on. I mean, listen. I'm sorry. As much as I did like the CW shows, I couldn't get into Legends of Tomorrow. Really. I couldn't get into it. I thought that was one of the better properties because I was very happy that they they really went and tried to get the Constantine storyline wrapped up from the show that got canceled. You know, again, yeah. another DC property that was fucking canceled. But I, I was really happy. And like uh, Matt Ryan to me is Constantine. Like that yep. is a Constantine right yep. there. Like, There's no better. Everything from the comic to the, the show, like he does the voiceover, like real life. He looks like him. He acts like him. He talks like him. Like yeah. when you read the comic and you think of Constantine's voice, it's Matt Ryan's voice coming out at you. It, it just, oh, not holding that guy down is going to be a loss to DC. Yeah, bro. It's gonna be hilarious, man. They they finally they finally like give him like you know, give him like a Constantine movie. And then, like, at the end of, like, the movie is, like, a portal, and you see, like, a dark, like, silhouette, like, stepping out. Yep. 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 We were, we were just talking about, uh, or, or we were just talking about, uh, freaking uh, Doctor Who yesterday. But, 
Oh, uh, Mick yeah. Rory from Legends? No, oh. no. I'm talking about Matt Ryan. Uh, he, okay. he played, yeah. That's funny. Because every time yeah. my, wife, my, my brain. <laughs> <clears throat> That's funny. Because every time I go Matt Ryan, my brain goes straight to like, uh, uh freaking the, 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 the fucking the, the quarterback, <laughs> yeah, the Atlanta Falcons quarterback. Yeah, but no, his name uh, is Matt Ryan too, though. Yeah, so it's just like, and all I think of is like all those like, uh, uh, uh freaking chisel the Dallas videos of his screwed. Oh yes, yes he was. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I know he, I know who he's talking about here. Yeah, he was. Uh, the, in the first season, the guy who put the whole team together. I can't think of his yeah. name. But going back to this comment, yes, Matt Ryan is Constantine. I was definitely annoyed as well when they announced a Keanu sequel. Nothing against Keanu Reeves. I, stick to John Wick right now. Like, I really don't need a second Keanu Constantine movie. You know, I want a Matt Ryan Constantine movie. I want them to do, you know, the whole. Oh, yeah. I even finished what I was saying. Freaking pit and caboodle so with him, man. If, like, so what if. All right. So check this out. What if they have the Matt Ryan Constantine movie at the end of the portal comes out? And then, like, you see who it is, and it's Keanu Reeves. It's constantly it's like, you need to come with me. <laughs> also, like, multi versus like, hell. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. Like, no, you oh. don't. You, Matt Ryan just owned the role. Like, I'm sorry. No, like, he there is are those actors. The there are those actors. They play a role, and you will never be able to see anybody in that role again. And nope. that is that that is one of those people. It's like us to Iron Man. Like you, you RDJ played that role. We can't watch anybody else play Iron Man. Like if someone you else know? plays Iron Man, you have to one thousand percent specify that this is not the Iron. This is a different Iron Man from a different universe variant type BS. Because I'm not gonna lie, when Multiverse of Madness came out, I low key wanted to see that Tom Cruise Iron Man. Yeah, I was curious in it. And the thing is, even if it's only for like a short role or stuff, because the thing is, it's not like Tom Cruise is. Oh, I'm Tom Cruise. I can't do some shit like this. Listen, so as he played that fat dude in freaking in, 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 in Tropic Thunder, that's a rap. He can do whatever the hell he wants now. All right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But like like I said, because like they like more like DC had the whole DC had the whole multiverse thing on lock. All right. They invented all that stuff. All right. The only reason why people associate that stuff with Marvel is because of this recent shit. But, all right, because you think about it, that Crisis on Infinite Earths, Infinite Crisis, uh, freaking Convergence, they had freaking, like, I think it's like maybe like two other uh, multiverse fucking stories and shit. Because I know it's the one where it's like Dr. Manhattan was fucking everything up. And then I think it's like one more, uh, one more with that. I mean, right. Like, and they were all great. They're all great stories. They're all legendary stories. And WB's got to be dumb for not incorporating some of these stories sooner. I mean, that's why, like, the CW event was such a big thing. Because, first off, no one adapted the story before. They didn't even have the animated movie for that yet. I mean? And then, just like, like they literally, it was like, they just like, all right, cameo after cameo after cameo. Yo, they brought back Shorty from Birds of Prey. Go ahead on what you're saying. That they had they had Batman. OG Robin had OG Robin from the Adam West Batman show on there. They had the the, the they had the friggin' uh, reporter guy from uh from from Batman and Batman Returns. You know what I mean? And then seeing uh friggin' Tom Welling as 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 Superman, a retired Superman. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of, a lot of people, I'm I've got to give him a slap. John Cryer. Was a great Lex Luthor. All right, he, he seemed like the the perfect type of like. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, 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 yeah, he kind of comes off like a bitch, but he does what he got to do and does it well. Like, he's re really gives more of this brain versus brains over brawn type deal. And he's a, he's a smart ass conniving ass motherfucker, which is next motherfucking loser. So, all right. So, um, see what's going on here. Yeah, man. Uh, it felt like I was talking to a brick wall for a second there. I was like, yo, what am I doing? I had a, I had a, I had a, go handle something real quick. 
you know, coffee went right through me. Why would they cancel that? That movie looked like it was gonna be hilarious, bro. <laughs> that movie was gonna be hilarious. Like, not every movie that you come out gotta be like a superhero black <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> He's right. He's right. He's uh, right. All right. Where were we? Where were we? All right. So uh we just talked about uh we we're talking about uh James Gunn's DC EU. Yep. Yeah. Since we're on that subject, let's talk about the Elseworlds projects. One in particular, yeah, the Batman movie. All right. See, that's the thing I like about like I say, I say, like, if they go ahead, like on a side note, if they do Alan, like I said before, if they do Alan Richard or whatever, uh, fucking Reacher and shit, as Batman, make it an Elseworlds project. Make that an Elseworlds project. Because I don't, I don't think, think they will because they are, the, the Batman movie itself is already an Elseworlds, pro, Elseworlds project with Robert Pattinson. Yeah. So we can do a lesson. I don't think he wants to do two Elseworlds Batman projects. He wants to do Brave uh, and the Bold. We can't forget that. Yeah. That's true. And Richard Rich could be good for the Brave and the Bold storyline. I just Yeah, saying. but he looks like he can kick Superman's ass. And a lot like, of people like, want like, fucking Jensen Ackles for the role, too. I mean, he voiced him. Right, he voiced him. But me, yeah. personally, I think Jensen Ackles, I want him more for Red Hood. I right, want him I mean, Jason Todd. Whoever this Batman, whoever's the Batman, he, I mean... He's got to be old, you know what I'm saying? He's got to be a lot older than him, you know what I'm saying? He's got to have that significant age difference because this was once his ward, you know what I mean? It grew up and became a gun willing psychopath but and infinitely badass. Like, as Red Hood. Oh. But wouldn't that be a little too close to Soldier Boy? Yes, yes, they are, Richardson. Yeah, he could be. He could be. Maybe, it, maybe a more. Comedic, brighter role for him, I could see. Yeah, how? I, but I just, I, I just, I just love Ackles in those gritty roles, like especially after watching him play Soldier Boy. All right, all right. <laughs> so we have Ackles as Hal Jordan, and we have uh, Alan Richard, uh, Richard, or uh, yeah, as freaking uh, uh, Batman. Alan Richard. They have, they have to have that scene. They have to redo that scene from the from 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 the animated movie. Where buddy's over here talking shit, and then out of nowhere his suit comes off. It's like what? And he did Batman. Justice League the ring War. Like... <laughs> Justice League War. That's the yeah. name of the anime yeah. movie. I you know. Almost said uh, Justice League Apocalypse. I was like, no, that's. <laughs> but yeah, that bro. animated universe right there. I want to take a side note real quick because that animated universe was beautiful. That was everything the live action movies should have been. Yep. <clears throat> From start to finish, the connected the the, the way the, the whole universe just connected in every movie. You had that one little piece they put in every single one that showed you that this is part of it. Mm -hmm. The R-rated films that they gave us, I oh, they did Batman Justice in so many of those films. They did the Long yeah. Halloween. <laughs> I like I love that movie, Long Halloween. 78 minute stream. Yeah, we do streams for a while on these shows. We got a lot yeah. to talk about. Yeah, man. We'll go for three hours if we have to. That's the point of yeah, this. Man. That's the point of this. It's gotta let all we don't do it out. every day. We're not doing this every day. This Hell is maybe no. like a once, twice a week kind of show here. So yeah. yeah, we're gonna do it quick. We're gonna do it for a bit. There's a lot for us to cover. We're late to the game. We gotta catch up. Yeah, man. You know, we like all right, what's all right, what's next? What's next? We gotta. <laughs> uh, so back onto the Batman project. Uh, the Batman Two was delayed. All right. Batman Two was delayed. I, I do like this. delayed then canceled. So right. I do like this universe. I do. I do like what Matt Reeves is building here. Mm -hmm. No superpower thing is a little and eh, a little too close to what That's Nolan a... did. But yeah, but you know what? If it's any, if it's any hero, you can get away with that. It's Batman. I was a little. I'll tell you what, though. In the first, the, the 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 one we got, the first Pattinson one, I was I was a little disappointed with something in that movie because watching the trailers and everything, I really thought I was getting a lot of hush vibes, a lot of hush vibes. And then I was like, vibes. you mean that's Redler? That's not hush? What the f what? 
Yeah, Riddler, Riddler definitely felt more like Hush than Riddler. But let's be honest, like, even during Hush, Riddler went through a lot of changes himself and was pretty much along those lines. Because remember, uh, at the end of Hush 2, you know what I'm saying? Turned out that Hush 2 was the Riddler. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like so it kind of works. It kind of works. But I'll tell you this. All right. First off, they got the mood perfect. Dark, wet, rainy, all that shit's fucking depressing. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's why it was cut, yeah. Casper. All right. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know exactly I mean? why it was cut. You know what I mean? That is but, exactly why. And I'm glad they did because you know what? We've gotten so much Joker out of everything from Batman so far out of all the projects. Yeah. I was glad that he tried to take a different approach and use the Riddler and the Penguin was involved. You you forget that's Colin Farrell, man. Like, yeah, you forget yeah. that's Colin Farrell's <laughs> penguin. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then you, you know, know and, and mind and you, that's another just, series coming. They just dropped the trailer yeah. for it that we actually yeah. missed. And then, mind you, if you think about it, another thing that I always feel because mind you, not only is he under all that makeup, remember Colin Farrell's Scottish. He he talks with a heavy ass accent, but if you told me this guy was like yo some fat nigga from Brooklyn, I would be like yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm a, I'm a, oh, oh, yeah, I'm a huge act, fan right. of the dude in his acting, you know? Like, the movie that really made me a fan of him was Seven Psychopaths. Like, I know some people didn't receive that movie very well, but I, I never saw it. it. Uh, Christopher saw it. Walken in it and everything. Oh, my God, man. It, it's it's a good movie, you know? It's a, it's a bit of a psychological, like, thriller kind of movie in a way, yeah. you know? Like, with the things that happen there. Like, it plays with your head a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, and yeah. Correction here. He's Irish. Oh, well, Irish, Scottish, whatever. Listen, he's from part of the UK. It talks with them thick ass accents that us Americans make fun of. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, but, but real talk, though, but like I said, I why? can see that. I, I, I like the Riddler they did in it. It's not going to be my favorite Riddler that's ever been done, nah. but I liked it. Nah. I think, I think. Like Paul Dano, definitely great, great actor. He plays like the lonely psychopath, freaking incel, freaking mastermind. That. that worked, especially in this day and age, because we, we deal with that in real life. So it was a slice out of life. We are was a slice out of reality with him. I but, also liked that we were getting this like year two Batman. You yeah, know, like he, no, he no, was not, only no Batman origin for, like, story. Like I said, we don't do right. origin stories no more. We right, do they skipped no the BS. You know, they just gave you, like, a real quick overview, and that was it for the maybe 1% that, like, don't know anything, just to give you the backstory. And we got to watch Batman go through that stage where he was struggling with his identity. Yep. Where he was struggling between being Bruce Wayne and Batman, and he didn't know where to draw that line. And I like that. I do like that, you know? And on top of that, that, there's the other line where not only does he not know where to draw the line between being Bruce and Batman, He's not 100% on what Batman's supposed to be. Because that's the whole thing. Because he starts out talking about, I'm vengeance, I'm vengeance, I'm vengeance. And throughout the events of the movie, he realizes that vengeance isn't the answer. What he seeks is justice. And I that's like how he becomes the Batman that we know and love. It's a whole, like, so he had a wonderful character development. Right. All right. So while sense, solving this mystery and dealing with all the craziness that was happening, I mean, like, well, I gotta lie, I low-key, I like when he went and he and he he went, he he got shot when he was cutting the electrical cord to drop in the water. And when he writes about the water, it was like rebirth, bro. Just duh. They just, they just thrown in like that animated series cute. Eh, 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 you know, eh, I do gotta, eh, I do gotta eh, say, because I remember when we did the trailer for that movie. That yeah. vengeance line and that scene yeah. of the beatdown was in yeah. that trailer. And when you got to watch it in the movie, the buildup to that scene yep. was faded a hundred yep. times better because yep. <laughs> you knew it was coming. Like you knew yep. it was coming, but it was like the way they built that up, it was like you were again seeing it for the first time. So See, it, it really was. I feel a, about that scene the way the way uh, James Rolfe talks about when he first was a kid, he first saw the Ninja Turtles movie. 
when they showed when they had that reveal. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know he's there, but you don't see him for shit. You know okay, so under this comment right here, to me, the Selena stuff worked. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because when you go into the comics, there was that kind of pull back and forth between Batman and Selena Kyle. Like, they always had that thing for each other, yep. but they were never willing to both go down that road at the same time. When one was, mm -hmm. the other one went away. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. it's a back and forth thing. So they actually hit that right on the head. I just want you to realize that. All right, to follow up on that, because mind you, this is a detective noir story. So she's clearly the femme fatale of that story. And she was written perfectly. Perfectly. Know what I mean? Oh, yeah, of course not. No Talia. No Talia, no Lazarus no. Pit. None of I would actually be okay if they skip away from the League of Assassins on this. And they need to go, they need to go, go court owls. Power, if they you're going to go, go court owls, court of owls, yes, it, that's where I was going to go. Is like court of owls. Yeah. Hush is okay. If they want to redo Mister Freeze, you can redo Mister Freeze. Just, I mean, I don't think don't, 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 don't give him don't, cheesy lines. <laughs> I don't. Just, uh, you would kill the, the dinosaurs. dinosaurs. The ice the ice <laughs> no, please don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do Everybody, it. Everybody, chill. <laughs> Yeah, skip the cheesy lines. Let us get a proper Victor Freeze. I I will be okay with a proper Victor Freeze. I think that 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 should be if they do a proper Victor Free Freeze, that would be in a. I think that would be in the main DC EU James Gunn project. All right, if we're doing Brave and the Bold. That's that's something that'd be part of that project. I don't want Roz because that's League of Assassins, you know. And right we're now it doesn't look Roz like. We need it's, to put other characters on. Like, listen, no more Roz, no more Joker, no more Bane. We, we already had that with Nolan's, all right? All correct right? me if I'm wrong. I don't think they showed that he has a League of Assassins origin. No. Not in uh not in uh not in the Batman, no. They didn't actually show how I don't think they actually showed where he got his fighting prowess from. No. So they could do it many ways. They could use the Court of Owls as the as the background on that, that like exactly. somebody from the Owls secretly trained him. You know, if they're going to do a Robin, they're going to do Dick Grayson, uh, which I hope they do Dick Grayson. Yeah. They could bring in the Talon storyline and have, you know, we can get Nightwing and his first true like arch nemesis on the screen, which would, be, fucking, would be great. You but know, here's I, the mean, thing. I mean, but remember, son of Batman, like that whole thing with Talon and then and, and Damien, you know what I'm saying? That that was a dope. That was a dope story. That was a dope like story beat. I mean, right. that, that talent is getting between Robin and Batman. I mean, and here's the th here's the cool thing about it that we with Court of Owls is you can get into the lore that the Arkham Asylum games were bringing in from the comics right. about the ancient Gotham City and how Arkham was started and and you know the founders of everything because yeah. that all ties to the Court of Owls. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's a so big already, yeah half that works already done, half that works already done. So, like I said, I would say if they have a Batman two, I mean the Batman two, or Return of the Batman or some shit like that. I don't know. Uh, I I wouldn't mind either if Batman two is kind of like an Ar Ar Arkham Asylum centered yeah. movie. You know, like yeah, yeah. So they kind of set that or, up. <laughs> all right, or. Or instead of doing like quarter hours for the second movie, put someone else for the second movie and make the quarter hours like the final boss. Yeah. And because if you're gonna go quarter hours, who do you follow that up with? Um, and then we gotta got think people no powers. I mean Yes, yes, they did. That's I mean what, that's why we're saying so, the, the groundwork has been place. laid. They threw it in your face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was no hint. <laughs> it's it. The groundwork is there. Yeah, the groundwork you know, already been laid. And that's the part that scares me is we know that that DC has had tendencies in the past to lay the groundwork and do mm -hmm. nothing with it. All right. So I would think that a good. Uh, I think I think the next I think the next villain I think is an underappreciated villain. I'll go something with Hugo Strange. 
on some Manchurian yeah. candidate type shit. Yeah, we, because we do he would do that. Like, like that is well within his fucking skill set, creating Manchurian candidates. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, all but these I people. Do, so- I do kind of agree with your boy here and what he just said. Yeah. I agree with the don't follow it up. Because here's my thing. If you do the Court of Owls, the Court of Owls storyline is one that can kill Batman. Yeah. And you can end that universe with that. It is an Elseworld story. Yeah. So you yeah. are free to kill Batman. I want everybody to understand this right now. In Elseworld stories in DC's history, Batman dies. Yeah. It happens in all of them. It's happened in DC. Injustice is one of the few that he stays alive. Yeah. It, it happens. Nightwing dies in these stories. You know, like... The main storyline, yes, those are characters. They're not they're, they're untouchable. They are protected by plot armor. Yeah. But in an else world story, their plot armor has holes and they can die. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I could see this. We do three movies of the Batman. At the end, it's Court of Owls, and Batman gives himself to take out the court. And that could maybe set up for if they want to continue the projects in a proper Gotham Knight series. I think. I personally think that if they're going to have a quarter hours movie, that should be the end cap. That should be the end game, and then that's it. Nothing else after that. Right, and that's what I'm saying. If anything is going to continue after that, it can't be Batman itself. Do a Gotham Knights series. Do, yeah. do what actually continues after that story. Don't give us some crap where Batman is still alive automatically and and somehow managed to survive being blown up and buried under a also, thousand feet of rubble. And <laughs> Listen, listen, listen. In fact, I think about it for mainline, you know what they should fail safe. They should put fail safe in mainline. All right. Like, how do you how do you kill a killer robot specifically designed to kill you, made by you? Like <laughs> see the ventriloquist can easily be in one. You know what I'm saying? I would watch that. I'd watch that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I would watch that. <sighs> All right. But yeah, I man. We I, think, I think I think we spoke enough on Batman. Right? Yeah. I'm a little Batman. Uh, hey, hey, hey! I want to be Batman. Another one <laughs> really meant shit to me. Was it me? Don't picture me in that was Batman Studios and shows utility built with a compartment full of pre rolls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So before we uh, get decide that we're gonna get done with this cast here, um, yeah. let me uh, pop these those killer doll vibes. You have ventriloquist and that doll. Mm-hmm. That's a really good character that was written. Batman's another one that has really. Good you, put it, put him in a, put him in a Hugo Strange movie, bro. See, that's another character. His bat, his villains make make him. Yeah. Without his villains, he wouldn't be as interesting. You know what I'm saying. Under the Red Hood, probably my favorite animated movie. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was Red Hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. We, we, well, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we, we, we just went over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that universe was a one. All right, so there is one more, one more topic we are going right. to go over. It has been behind me this whole show. You mean that my... Benatar? <laughs> <laughs> it has been behind me this whole show. I have been waiting to freaking talk about this. And here we are, our final topic of the day. Taylor Swift is Dazzler. She's yeah, secretly saving the it. world. I can see it. I can see it. I, hey. I can see it. She got plot armor, IRL. All right. So we're going to go back here. If you have not watched this show, if you have not read the comic, you are you you are sleeping more than a Snorlax in the Pokemon world. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful project. It was created by Robert Kirkman. From front to finish, man, this is this is one of the most beautiful things. The show is still going. The show season 2 is still currently dropping. They just dropped, I think, what was it, episode six? Uh, we drop? still have so much to go. <laughs> I think it dropped on like Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. Uh, there is still so much to go. I'm going to try and refrain from talking too much about season two 
um, at least the second half that's getting dropped right now because of spoiler reasons. I, you know, and all right, you know, so but we're gonna, gonna speak some, some comic time. stuff here. So if you don't want to know all what right. happened in the all comics, right, let's all right, let's take it from let's take it from the top. First off, all right, I love how it starts out and it's like it, it feels like a coming of age story, like. Duh. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> oh man, man, you go into spoiler territory, bro. This is, but I just love you are the sleeping. Most, the most relate. All right, the most relatable part of that whole first episode was because mind you, his powers ain't kicked in yet. He's getting bullied at school. This isn't this, a girl had to save him from the bully and all it's that. It's some Peter Parker yeah. shit right there. Exactly. So when he goes and he throws the garbage and that shit flings into over it, I'm just like, nigga, I quit my job right there. And that nigga was like, peace. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I like I how we watch him like transition that show, you yeah. know. Like he struggles yeah. at first to be get into this role, and he still struggles the whole way. That man, that man get his ass beat. All right, like, I every mean, third episode he gets his ass handed to him, bro. Because oh, it's not man. supposed to be some easy shit. It's never, and I never liked the idea of like, oh, the good guy wins every time without any type of difficulty. No, we can't have that. One of the worst beatings he's ever going to get is still yet to come on the show. Even worse than Battle Beast. Even worse than Battle Beast. Oh shit! Oh shit! Because Battle. Beast. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm not happened. going to give away All right. All right. how right. it happens. Uh, 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 but I'm gonna go into the comic here. All right. Oh, here we go. There is somebody who's going to come on this show now. If you have not read the comics, I'm still not going to spoil too much for the comics. Yeah. There is a character. His name is Conquest. The His name. Is Conquest. Is conquest and he is oh. a Viltramite. When we get to the Viltramite war, this is what I'm gonna tell you guys. Like, and I don't even think in season two we're going to get the Viltramite war. I think we're going to end season two with the start of the Viltramite war. All right. Bro. Which I won't even be surprised if they toy us along even more and they do the other stories in season three and we get more angst from Levy or something and they wait for season four to give us the Viltramite War because the Viltramite War is huge. It is the biggest storyline out of Invincible. Like it is the best, the most talked about. Everybody who has read the comics, this is the this is the moment you're waiting for. Okay. Like uh, this is the moment you're waiting for because of what happens in this storyline. Oh, I'm not ready, dude. Oh, nobody is ready. I'm telling you right now, nobody is ready. I wasn't ready when I read it in the comic. Okay, if you haven't, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of promo another guy's channel here. If you don't want to read the comic and or go out and buy all the different issues, and you don't know where to start and where to go to go through it. Uh, on YouTube, there is a guy I am. I actually love his channel, and he does very well. Um, his name is Rob. He is Comics Explained. Yeah, I love he this has guy. he has the entire Invincible series up to the Viltrumite War and the end of it on there, so you can catch up. He goes over it in detail, like you know. After I read it, I went and I checked it out on his, and he he really doesn't miss a beat. He gets you all the good nooks and crannies there, and he even gives you the show comparison. He gives you the show comparison for the parts of the show that I've already played, just so everybody's aware. Um, so if you don't want to go back and read the comics, go over there. Just put an AirPod in and listen to it. You can look at the animation, too. He posts it on the video screen. It's it's really worth it. Um, nobody's ready. Nobody's ready. All right. Here's another thing I got to get off my chest. To... They... I feel I feel that they've they they they've vindicated Amber because Amber was I thought Amber was such a bitch during season one. Mm -hmm. All right, because especially the especially the breakup part, it was like so. If you knew I was a fucking superhero, the fuck you getting mad at me for for not being around when we were in danger? Like 
bitch, I was right there. Like, <laughs> and I think there had to be maybe some kind of error in editing or something. Because I'm pretty sure they go like, like that in the comics, right? Uh, it's similar. I mean, they had they 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 had them pretty much as high school kids, and they were just trying to still figure out their lives. Like yeah. that's the way it's written, you know. Like, yeah, they they both have these powers. They're trying to balance being, you know, high school students at first, and then and then college students. Well, I don't think Eve actually went into college. I think she stayed out of it. Ah, yes. So that was another thing I wanted to get into. Because in the comic, oh, we go back to episode one of Invincible, when you get to the end of Omni-Man, or Nolan, however you want to call him, yeah. taking out the Guardians. Oh, God. When I, like, the show toned that down. And that's hard for a lot of people to believe because it was brutal and it was gruesome. Yeah. And it was, he, he did it with effective and efficientness. And he, he got him. Bro, the and, way he did fake Batman was like, <laughs> like he slammed that man like a bag of ice, bro. Like, good god! In the comic, it's like one panel, like it's quick, it's quick. Like there, there was not much of a fight to it. Like, and they really, really, really displayed Omni Man's power right there in the comic, right away. The show mm -hmm. held it back a little bit. The show held it back a little bit. I, I get it for the level of suspense. It's still impressive. Know. Right, but you know, Kirkland's part of that project. I'm, I'm okay yeah. with it. Like he knows what he's doing. It's, it's yeah. pr the show is pretty in line with the comic. You know, th there are minor changes. Maybe some of the events happen in a different order, but it's, it's pretty, pretty in line to it. You know, it's almost a copy and paste. Man, oh, man, bruh, bruh. Oh man, not nah, mad. Nobody right. is ready for what's going to come with this show. That's All what I'm right. saying. If you haven't watched this show yet, go ahead and check it out. Like it's on Amazon. The first season's already out. Season two is, is still currently airing. Um All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you some questions, a series of yes or no questions for someone who knows the full lore. Okay. We keep well, stuff to keep vague. All right, first off, should I be concerned about assistant buddy, the one that died and they remade him and shit? No. I yeah. don't I don't I was gonna do something gangster, bro. Like, I mean, it depends how you want to say worried about him. I don't really, I don't really remember much of his storyline. Yeah, because I thought that was an interesting, like, story beat to go along. Because basically, it's like, like, like you die. I can tell you a character you should keep your eye on. All right, and it's not because he's gonna do something evil, but it's because of how he is, and that's Alan yeah. the Alien. All right. Oh, of course. And of course. Mark's Mark's brother. All right. There's Wait, a, there's an important Alan's, Alan's part Voltramite, isn't he? No. Damn. No. But the if guy the guy he's watch, working for is. I, I'm not gonna answer this question because yeah. it was already answered in the most recent episode yeah. of Invincible. Oh yeah, we passed the line. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Which I have to say, there is the guy from who voiced Optimus Prime is in this show. I yep. wanted to go over the cast of this too, man, because it's a stellar of cast. Course. Of course. Uh, I can't remember his name, but the guy who voiced Optimus Prime, uh, you Peter have Hull. you have Mark Hamill um, mm -hmm. as Art, which is so so fitting because you have Stephen Yen playing Mark, and mm -hmm. Mark Hamill is playing Art, the the costume maker, yeah. and you get this scene of them too. And it's like Steven Yen in real life is kind of like new to the superhero community and like the work he's doing. Yeah. And then you have Mark Hamill, who's the seasoned veteran, and you have his character like giving advice to Mark yeah. over, over things in life and stuff to do. And it was so fitting. It was yep. so fitting because it's like this is like real life shit right here. Like they hit a home run with that. Yep. You know, and then you have I a guy like played, Mark Hamill here. Played, like, I should have played that. Nah, 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 nah. Yep, Alan the Alien is a freaking saint, bro. He literally has Sanghai boots. He literally has Sanghai boots, bro. Peter, Peter Cullen, Cullen, thank you. Yes, yeah. And it's like you hear that voice of him, and I can't remember the 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 character he plays, and I don't want to say too much about it because it's a spoiler. Um, but it's like the voice is so fitting, man. It's just like, oh, <laughs> listen, J.K. Why? Simmons is Omni Man, fitting. <laughs> 
Like, like everything about this show, the cast, yes. like Seth Rogen is Alan Alien is funny. Because, all right, like, all right, I got another thing. I got another thing. All right, I'm sorry, but I sh- I I totally ship Mark and freaking Eve, bro. I know it's not gonna happen. I know it's not gonna happen, but I totally shipped them. All right, mind you, she was with it. All right, bet. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't say anything. I don't. I gotta. I gotta rewatch the first half of the season two. I. I don't know. I think they did the scene from the comic, but I have to. Because I remember there's, the there's scene a like, scene that happens. I gotta. I gotta look at. It. I think they did it. Yeah, because uh, because yeah, because I felt so bad for when she went. She flew that nigga window. And he on the bed getting it up, getting it with freaking with Amber. It is just like, damn. This is right after she found out that uh, that, that 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 her man was cheating on. You know what I'm saying? Oh, speaking of that guy, we could technically talk about what happened to him because that was episode five. Yeah. Yo, respect, 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 bro. His my respect for that guy went through the roof after that last episode. Watch episode six; it's going to go even higher. Oh yeah, I saw episode six. Okay. Yeah, but we're not talking about episode six. <laughs> all right, all right, Casper, I'll make sure to drop that line to you. Don't mind me always playing with my hat and stuff. I just like we did my hair. So, all right. Hey, thanks for coming, Casper. Yeah, uh, but like I was saying before, like, like. A lot of characters, like, they're really starting to show more of what these characters represent, like, who who the fuck these people actually are, like, as people, you know what I mean? So, you're learning to, you're learning to, like, see them more than just, like, oh, he's just a parody of this character, or he's just a generic, this kind of guy, you know what I mean? So, I, I really, I really love that about the series, but... At the end of the day, like, <laughs> I want to see Battle Beast again, bro. I, I gotta see him again, dude. It was so, oh my god, he was like, oh, "You will." And it's, was, it's a better fight. I will tell you that. All right, all right. And Let's it's a. Like this is probably it is probably one of the most anticipated fights of the series. For me, it, it's second because of Conquest. Like, I yeah. just, I want, I want that. When when they play it out, it, you'll see why. You read the comic, you're gonna totally be as hyped as me. Like, no, and that th- this is the one. Like, that's the one. <laughs> but the battle beast fight is is huge. It it's huge. Um. Oh man, oh I so want to say it, man, and I just can't. I don't want to do it to you. I don't want to do it to you. I know. It's, that's just how it is. It's just. Oh, I can't hear it's you. It's one of those, man. I, I just need you to know it's la, la, one of those. La, 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 la. Like, <laughs> like, it's up there with the conquest fight. It oh, is up there with. Look, the I'm looking forward to that. Day. I'm looking forward. Like, to those are definitely the two biggest fights that you're you're gonna see coming up. You know, like nothing against Mark and 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 all of that. And, <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm, I'm flexing. <laughs> Invincible oh, every Thursday, man. Every Thursday. No. Uh, I'm considering doing reviews for this channel once we get a little better. So maybe oh, you know, course. maybe we'll miss it on season two. But as maybe we I get to season three, I actually recorded a review for uh, the Halo show. And oh wait, I, I don't hear, hear I can, anything because I, I gotta watch season two. I gotta I, watch season two. I can I can hear dope typing right now. Just <laughs> I can hear dope typing right now. Because with everything have, going on, I haven't gotten to season two yet. I gotta renew my Paramount. The I gotta show, renew my Paramount. Show, and it's been like, it's not Halo. I give it I'm straight up, but it's good. It is good. Anything you know from the game, just throw it out. Throw it out. All right, just keep the basic shit. The who's who and what's what. But the way these things are playing out, especially in season two, season one, yeah. Season one kind of sucks. La, 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 la. I'm season one sucks. Yeah, season one was horrible. I didn't watch season two. I will yeah. say this though: season one of the Halo TV show, yeah, was better than the Halo movies we got. Facts. 
Because here was my problem. We had the Halo movie that they gave us Master Chief and all of the fights were smoke and mirrored and we got him for three minutes at the end of the movie. Yeah, uh, Ford on to Reach. No, Ford on yeah. to Dawn. Yeah, and I... Uh, I was like, this whole movie, I'm like, we're not getting Master Chief. And then the Covenant showed up and I was like, okay, we're just going to watch everything die. And then Master Chief showed up and for a moment, I was happy. I was excited. I was like, there he is. Finally, we get it. And then, like, the fight scene was just so low budget. So ha, low budget. Yeah. And, 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 and smoke and mirrors. And, like, listen, everything was, like, behind the, the scenes listen, of him fighting. And Listen, listen. They put all the money in the costumes, all right? They put all the money into that suit, bro. And that was a good-looking suit. That was a good-looking suit, though. And then the other one they did, and it was the guy who plays Luke Cage in that one. And they did the saddest representation of the flood that I have ever seen. And it made no sense to me. Yeah. Like, it made no sense to me. Because you're going to a ring that the chief had already destroyed. And they go onto this ring with no knowledge of what the hell is on there. But I'm, if Master Chief was already there, wouldn't the UNSC already have... There wasn't going to be a info? full debrief of what's going on with these things? They would already know about the shit there, you know? Like, and they man, would they know about the flood only. and... And they work right. for Odin. They should know all. The, they should know everything. They, they, they don't brief these guys. Yes, yes, it is. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love and it. And uh, he gave us our answer here. Yep. Michael. Yep. Mike Coulter. Yep. Yep. And yep. you know, like it, if it wasn't a Halo project, it could have been a good movie. Yeah. But the fact that it was a Halo project. I about season one of Halo. It was like, if this was something else and not Halo, it would shine on its own. But you have a new project. You have Halo. So we got to, you know what I'm saying? It felt so disconnected from Halo. Like, I forgot I was watching a Halo entity. I tell you this, every problem you're going to have with season one gets solved in season two. And it, they even tried to make it be connected and, and keep you yeah. showing that it's connected yeah. and it felt so disconnected. Like, the flood did not feel like the flood. Yeah. We knew it was the flood. We yeah. know that was the flood. Yeah. We're, we know that's what you were trying to do and mm -hmm. you Drop shit the, the bed. You mm -hmm. shit the bed mm -hmm. so bad and it, it was just... Uh... So again, the season one of Halo show was better because we got better action out of it with the... Yeah. With the Master Chief and the Spartans, I like oh that God. we have other I loved Spartans. Every fight. I loved every fight. I was not very keen on everything else, though. Like, all right, it was boring. I would dragged. say the main difference, one of the main, I think the most stark ray, the one of the most stark, most important difference between season one and season two. In season one, that man had his helmet off too fucking much. All right. In season two, you're not going to care. All right. Well, I haven't watched season two, so please don't tell me anything yeah. about it. But after season one, I was like, I'm still going to go watch season two. Yeah. You know, like, I'm yeah. still going to watch it. I'm a Halo fan. I, I mean, come on. We all started yeah. our gaming there. I mean, Online gaming started there. I mean, I know, look at the back here. Just saying that those are all Halo posters. Right. Those are all like, hold on, got to shine a light on it. The Halo 2 poster in the middle. That's all like the things. I know my, and I got stuff covering his face. But behind that jersey there is, is the, it's literally the Master Chief uh, Xbox banner from uh, GameStop. You know what I'm saying? So, like... But, you know, at, at the end of the day, like, I always felt like that that show, like, we're going to watch The Fall of Reach. We're going to watch The Spartans die. You know, even before Season 1 dropped and I saw the trailer, we're going to watch all the Spartans die, and that's when the Master Chief is going to don the moniker of I never take the helmet off. And that's what I'm hopeful for. If they do that, the show is safe to me. And I don't care about the helmet thing. Because if you have read, I don't know if many people knew about this, there is a series of books that connected to the games. Oh, he's about to break them out. I don't feel alone anymore because I have read these books. Here he goes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In these so, books, it's so I understand. I like. I understand the need to have him have scenes where he doesn't have the helmet on. I mm -hmm. just thought they did it a little too much. Yeah. Like for so example, like, like when uh, you saw you like when you saw uh, you saw season one, right? Yeah. All right. So end of the first episode when he takes his helmet off, right? They shouldn't have shown his face. They should have shown him from behind taking the helmet off 
all right, and then seeing like and then seeing like Quan, like, oh my god, that's what it looks like and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And throughout that whole thing, all right. Now I understand in the following episode when he takes when he takes her over to uh, Soren, and he's walking around, you know, with the, with the suit off and stuff, which kind of makes no sense to me because. I thought you needed a whole machine to put put the suit on and take the suit off. I mean, I mean, at least like Halo Four, they at least that was what they did in Halo Four. I mean, I mean, I could see that. Yeah, they needed. I mean, that's what they. I would just say do it. Spare. Maybe that's something they'll adopt later. Like they're going to show like an advancement to the suit. You know, like I don't know. Like we'll see. Again, I haven't watched season two, so maybe they did this already. I don't know. I don't know. I got to catch up, guys. I'm sorry. There's too much to watch, and I have to renew my Paramount. I am not going to confirm or deny any of the statements. Of your life. <laughs> yes, please don't. But I do know that from the books, you know, and yeah. this is why I love the books, because there was actually even a couple that went in after. I mean, I mean this one right here, my favorite scene, my favorite scene in the whole book, this, uh, in the flood, when he almost gets got. And at the same time, you get to see as he's being changed into a proto-grave mind. Like, that's like eerie. You know what I'm saying? That 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 is that is text. That was that was grade A, written body horror. Like I loved it. I loved it. I love these books, bro. Yep. And it's like in those books, you you get the thought. You don't you don't get this in the video games, but you get the full description of what Master Chief felt watching all of his Spartan brothers and sisters yep. fall to the Covenant and die and give their lives in the Battle of Reach. Yep. And then there's even a later series that came out that actually explains that some of those Spartans were still there and that Master Chief was not the last Spartan. Some had survived. And I got to tell you, like, those of you who are saying, oh, well, I played the Fall of Reach game. I, I seen the storyline. They they, they, no, they did that, do what that book. Did. That book predates Reach by, like, almost 10 years, bro. Halo 2 was out when oh, all of these book series... Yeah, these books came they out dropped. like 05, 06, like 05, 06. We'll say those books came out. Man. One of the best written series in books, by the way, guys. Like, if, if you haven't and you're yeah, a Halo Brian fan. Yeah, Brian Nyland. If you're a Halo it. fan, go ahead and read these books. Yeah, you read will books. not be disappointed. Um, I'm not much of an avid book reader, and I can say that I have read those books. <laughs> um great great series and they really explain a lot and i was that's what i was really hopeful for the halo tv show is that they were going to pull a lot of source material out of the book mm -hmm. you know because when i saw the pirate bases and all that i was like oh they're they're giving us the book they're giving us the book which is good because the, but it, it season one it felt like they were trying to mix it, it i don't know man I, I i just don't know what season one man like I, I said, hate that sometimes with shows. Season like one, the first season sucks. It puts a bad taste in your mouth, and the rest of it's yeah. good, and you just don't trust to watch it. Yeah, it was like this. Sometimes you got to eat your vegetables before you can eat your meat. You know what I'm saying? So, this is the vegetables. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave it at that. But every character I seem to hate, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of char characters will be redeeming themselves. They're like, "Yo, get this motherfucker off my screen!" And then later on, you'll be like, "Yo, that's the Nick." You know what I'm saying? All right. Like, um, I did love. Listen, I like the whole. I I like the fact they threw a love story in there. All right, as like unmaster chief as it is for him to be clapping covenant booty, but I mean. <laughs> But I think I think it, it, it kind of ties into like how they're trying to make this story about like how trying to make the story about uh, season one at least him regaining his, his humanity and also having it taken away at the same time. With Cortana. Yeah, you know what else I wish they would have not done in season what? one? Show us booty. Show us the brutes. Yeah, they should have saved the brutes. They should have saved the brutes until way later. Because now you don't make the elites seem very challenging. Oh, trust me. Like I said, season two. What I'm gonna say, season two. 
Season Answer two. me yes. Okay, now we're going to do All right. Now. My turn. All right, my turn. My turn. Because I got to know something. All right. Is the Arbiter here yet? Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> but, but, They're going that route. But it's not Sal Vattle. Okay. So it's, it's a, preliminary. Yeah, it's it's, 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 a, it's another, it's a it's a previous Arbiter. Okay. Yeah. And did they do the, uh, what were the hierarchs of the Covenant? Yes. The uh, okay. the Prophets. Oh, yeah, I know, because I know they show, oh, yeah, they did. They showed the Prophets in season one. Yeah. They showed the Prophets in yeah. season one. I, that was another one. Like, I feel like maybe you could have waited on the Prophets, too. You know, because yeah. we didn't get the Prophets very early in the Halo series. They either. had, to, they really had to in order to, 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 to really, like, Jeez. yep, Master Cheeks, baby, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I really, I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I totally agree with you on the like whole. Like, Jackals, Elites would have been a decent start yeah. for the Covenant. And then, like, because I like how in that first game, you didn't really know shit about the Covenant themselves. You didn't know anything about their hierarchy, their society, their government. You didn't know shit about them until Halo 2. I think this is all stuff they should introduce in Season 2 and continue the world building, whatever. However, I do appreciate how they did it. They don't, they don't show high charity. We don't show too much of high charity. They'll say, like, they'll show the prophets, but they don't show them, like, holding court or nothing like that. The other th the other thing about season one that kind of bothers me, too, is Reach hadn't fallen, and we already got a Halo ring. You know, they were already discussing the Halo rings. And already having Master Chief, like, I want to get there. And that's not the way it went down. Nope. You know, like it goes down that Reach falls. They're running from Reach. They're running from the government and the covenant, and they find the ring. They they just manage to show up to it. I'm gonna be straight up. All right, minor spoiler: none of that shit happens. But, but the way they do it is fucking dope. The way they do it is fucking dope. I mean. Now, all right. Now, I was gonna elaborate on. Yeah, I do kind of agree with that, though. I guess I guess that does make sense, you know. But yeah, it would have also been cool as like a cloak and mirror, like a little mystery on the prophets, you know. Like yeah, I would have been like, either been like, yo, this mysterious chick, nobody knows who she is, but for some odd reason, they should have introduced McKee. Uh, like they should have first introduced McKee when um. When 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 that UNSC ship found like the empty Covenant cruiser, and then she boards the ship and has all the Lacongo with her, the straight horror movie bullshit. Like they should have had it like that, and that's how they first like introduce her. She's like, ha 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 ha. You know what I mean, you know what I'm saying? She has a little fucking blade in her fucking nail and she's stabbing niggas and shit. You know what I mean? And like, yo, who the fuck is this? And then as the story goes on. Show like bits and pieces of the backstory. Show, show that little backstory of her living on that trash planet. She 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 actually finds love in this horrible, horrible environment for children. And they kill her boyfriend and take her away. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then the company show up and they're like, you know what? She's coming with me. You know what I'm saying? In fact, I need to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that would. Yeah, because like, the, the whole connection thing between her and Master oh, yeah, Chief but, threw me Nicolo, off, too. But, like, Nicolo in the shape of a human, you know how fucking scary that is? That's like some invasion of the body snatchers type bullshit. Because it also, it also like, I was a little bothered by the, like, the connection that they made between her and, and Master Chief. You know, and how they, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, see, it bothers, <sighs> listen, season one is going to bother the crap out of you. Season two is going to make sense. Season two makes it make sense. Know what I mean, like, we can't look at it as like Chief, it's a random. We gotta look at this the same way we look at like Batman and Catwoman when she's on her bullshit. Listen, you know this mean? is this is my biggest request for this show. All right. And if you are a producer or, or a cast member or employee or whatever of this this project, and you are watching this, chances are you're probably not. But if you are, do me a favor. 
learn from the mistake of the movie for one do not give them to us too soon. And two, please, for the love of everything, do the flood right. Do not. No. No. That look. What? What? <laughs> what? What? I'll just scratch my, just scratch my neck, bro. <laughs> if they did it too soon, as long as it's okay, I'm okay with it. I get it. They they show up permission on the first ring, so like when we get to a ring, obviously we have to see them. Wait, like permission for my mi- permission for minor spoiler. Minor spoiler. Go ahead. Not to the final episode. Okay, that's okay with me. I'm okay with that as a reveal yeah. for the next season. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, but I don't want the major Perfect. like three way war. Yes. Real. Yeah, I just I don't want the major like three way war that we get when everything goes yeah. to Earth yeah. way too soon. I want that. That needs to be like the grand finale, man. Like yeah. that's like the very final season of Halo. That's what you got to do. Like I'm totally okay if we do seven seasons, eight seasons of him going through all the rings. I am totally okay with that. You Should know, be seven like seasons. Hmm? Should be seven seasons. Right? No, I'm saying. <laughs> It Think should. It. It'd be, it, I mean, seven seasons only. Each one would be a different ring, but if they want to speed it up, yeah. I could see them doing it a different way or whatever. Or if maybe you want to add something I mean, in there to like some of the other texts of the planet. Why you just had shit like with that. like, you know what I'm saying? With uh, uh, seven. Sevens was all like all Bungie's thing. That's why like, why do you think Guilty Spark is 343 Guilty Spark? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, man. It's like Seventh to the seventh power or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know he's got something like, hold up. It's like, uh, uh, so I can't do math in my head. That's why there's seven rings. That's why, that's why, uh, that's why, uh, the floors of uh, the library. Uh, I just, I really want them to hit this lore right. right. Now we got seven to the seventh power. I know it's supposed column. to be. Go? Right here, he's put. He, your buddy said it. Seventh column. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So seven times seven times seven is three forty three. Yep. 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 Yeah, man. I saw my buddy log in because you know, I play Destiny and shit. But I miss, I miss the Halo days, dude. I miss those Halo days, bro. I miss when zombies wasn't the, stories, the, the theme song. It was all captivating, man. You know what I'm saying? And then I remember playing all these custom games in Halo 2. Like, players made up SWAT. Players made up Infection. Players. And then they're coming back to that with Infinite right now. And it's, it's good. I love it. But I have not seen any custom stages anywhere near as impressive as these monstrosities that they were creating in Halo 5. Halo 5 had the, had to have the best forge. It had the best forge maps. All right? Like, if you're on Halo 5, there's a forge map called Escape from the City. That was the dopest shit ever. And it was an infection map where you had to run. You got to pretty much, you're armed with like a shoddy. You got to run for your life. And one person is a fucking zombie with super speed and, to, and, and reduce gravity and stuff. And oh, they kill you. Oh, then you join the ranks. You know what I mean? And you have to go through this, like, you got to jump a bunch of fences, get to a truck, the truck closes, you port to another part where you got to go through this big tunnel, everyone gets on, like, freaking, uh, uh, uh mongooses. Oh, sorry, I feel these. Ah, oh, sorry. Bless you. Oh, Bless you. It's pollen, dude. Yeah, man. It's allergies, bro. Killing me. South Florida bipolar weather gets to us, man. Yep. It's going to be hot as fuck today. It's going to be cold as fuck tomorrow. I'm saying, I'm gonna, run through, I'm gonna make another run through all my hoodies again. Anybody up north watching this is gonna be like, South Florida cold. What are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Grow a pair. They were like, yeah, that man, that ain't cold, man. You know what I'm saying? We be outside, it be negative 15 degrees with my dick out. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, I haven't seen anything like that yet. Like, I wanna, yeah, I got recon too. Actually, no. I get recon oh. playing custom games with those guys. But, uh, we're going to Anyways. Burr. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Don't worry. When you come back down here, you'll thaw out. You'll thaw out. 
<laughs> is it gonna thaw out or is it gonna straight up melt? Right. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, man, just as a closing cap there, man. You know, yeah, Halo man. was the Halo was the game back in the day, man. So Hell the fact yeah. there's a show now, you know, it was like I remember Halo One being a kid going over to my buddy's house around the corner, and we'd all land That's party cool. that land party I, that I, stuff, I'm multiple TVs, up. multiple Xboxes. I'd be straight up. I slept on Halo when it, when it was first out. Like I used to, I used to be the biggest hater of Xbox. I used to, I used to talk shit about Xbox all the time. I was because I was, a, I was a Sega fanboy. I was like, why is everyone talking about Xbox? Nigga, we got, we still got Dreamcast. You know what I mean? I used to be like, yo, you hear about the new, uh, the new Dance Dance Revolution coming out on Xbox? Doesn't even come with the pad. You just get on top of the Xbox. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm gonna catching, I'm gonna catching uh, a two week ban from Game Facts. It's about a picture up. On Xbox forums, say it's called finally a use for Xbox. There's an Xbox with a GameCube on top of it, which I find hilarious. Oh, yeah, I've seen one of those, but they were using it as a doorstop. Hilarious because <laughs> this is that GameCube right here. <laughs> you know what I'm like, uh, but yeah, man, I was playing Super Mario Sunshine the other day, anyways. But like I was saying, though, uh, freaking, I remember going, I remember uh, I was in my, my, I was like my freshman year in college. I tried to pledge for. Uh, I was trying to make make the cut to be able to pledge for a fraternity, with the fraternity house, and of course the house is all land up. Ha, <laughs> yeah. <It, laughs> Gamecast. Anyways, all right. So that was my first experience with Halo, playing sixteen player. I remember. I remember exactly what it was a sixteen player. A sixteen player free for all on chill out. And I know where any of the weapons were. I run around with a plasma pistol, thinking, man, this game fucking sucks. Playing on the Duke, you know what I'm saying? I know what the fuck I was doing, right? But the thing is, I wasn't really big into, like, you know, FPS back then. Like, in my particular case, the only FPSs I played was Duke Nukem, GoldenEye, and uh, the original Unreal. Like, the actual, mm. like... There's another old one back there that you didn't mention. What? I don't know if you played it, but I played it, and that was what? Turok. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like I said, I'm getting <laughs> that's it. another golden one that people sleep on. I don't I hear much talk about Turok anymore. But the few times I did play, I used to do shoot the dinosaurs in the neck, and watch the blood squirt out. Like, <laughs> I mean, so like I didn't really start being like really into like FPS and stuff until like I went like mind you, of course, over the years played Turok, played Perfect Dark. You know what I'm saying? Played. Played a little bit of Counter Strike, but obviously didn't know what the fuck I was doing back then either. But the game that I think locked me in for this was Time Splitters Two. My boy got it for Christmas, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't really why like, he hated he hated like FPSs and stuff, but like that that game. Like the, the ongoing story, the jokes, the gags, it, it was dope. So I would come over to his house and we would just repeat the whole game. We you know, beat the whole campaign. It was like, yo, that game was fucking dope. You know what I mean? And then started doing a multiplayer, whooping everybody in a multiplayer. And then one of my boys, he got salty. He goes, next time I see you, I'm gonna, I am I got something for your ass. I'm, I'm going to fuck you up. Comes over, Xbox, Halo, and I'm just like... I ain't playing no shitty ass Xbox. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you mad because you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. As soon as I fit, mind you, right then the S controllers are out. So I can actually hold the goddamn controller. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I figured out how to get them headshots in with an M6C of F6D, rat. You know what I'm saying? And then we started playing campaign. And I was just drawn into the story. And man was drunk. And he was like, listen, I don't feel like taking all this shit out your car. Just hold on for a little bit and just give it back to me when I need it. I was like, all right, bet. Went home. And the rest was history. All right. Like, I ran through that whole game. It took me like four. It took me like a week to beat it because I'm like, I mean, look, Xbox yeah. has its games that are expensive oh, yeah. to Xbox that, you know, make me be like, I need to go get an Xbox. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. But then, same thing with PlayStation. Right. And, yep. I just oh, have trust issues with Xbox because I've had the 360 die on me and I never got the Red Ring of Death. It just stopped playing games every single time. So I have my trust issues there. 
But now being in the PC world, I kind of have the best of both worlds. I have a custom Xbox 360 that red ring that red ring like five times to the point where I had to learn how to like take it apart and and apply thermal paste myself. But in fact, I'm probably gonna fix it one of these days because it's got like a it's got like a dope design carved into the that thing. right there. Yeah, that right there. Oh, that don't too. need an Xbox anymore. That's why I don't buy one. Incorrect. Because on my Xbox 360 hard drives, I have games that are just continued. For example, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Yeah. I mean, I can see that, but... You can't pull it up on Xbox. You can't pull it... You can't... It's not on Game Pass. It's not on... You know what I mean? Like, the... But I'm uh, just saying, like, some of those yeah. exclusives, I can play it there, you know? And Yeah, of course, of course. And then I got a PS5 sitting downstairs in my stepson's room, so we're... I'm about to buy a Series X, though. I'm, like, this close. Because the thing is, like... If I buy the Series X, it's like this. All I got here is like this. Hey, I think it's out. I think it's out. I think it's already out because I think I saw it on the Epic Store. All right. Well, let's let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think I saw it on the Epic Game Store. But. No, nah, it's still it's still not out yet. Oh, in May. Okay. They're taking pre-orders though. Because I'm looking at Steam right now. All right. Well, I think we did a good cast today. My kids woke oh, up. Oh, so definitely. I gotta, awesome. I gotta go handle them. Listen, guys, we're gonna be doing this again. Uh, maybe next Sunday. Uh, maybe same Sunday time. Maybe not same time. We're gonna let you know. Me and, me and Zero not, here. I'm probably not to get really, really wrecked the night before. Yeah. <laughs> Because like, I am fighting a wicked hangover right now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't um, know. I, didn't, I haven't been up to date on uh, that news. I really haven't been up to date on that news. Um, but yeah, anyways, I think we're gonna call that the cast for today. Thank you guys, mm-hmm. everybody who showed up and yes. man, it was pretty yo, active in yo, the comments. Yo, shout section, out to man. everybody who came for episode one, man. That's that that's beautiful. beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, I got a I got a pretty active comment stream going on here. All right, let's 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 hear it for our viewers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My Can't do it without y'all. Out. So uh, we will definitely be back. I am definitely going to work with Zero here. We're going to maybe try and figure out a night of the week. We could do some review shows. We're going to try and do this on a regular schedule so that you guys can always be here to watch us. Uh, if you watch this after the stream and you're watching the recorded version, you know, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it. The after after stream views count as well. That's right. Uh, everything counts. Please support us. Whatever you want to do, like like the channel. Whatever you want to do, mm-hmm. um, keep us doing this. I mean, we're just here talking about it. You know, I talk about this stuff all the time around, and I'm like, why not just do this for everybody to hear, get everybody's insights, share my theories. Um, also, if you want to check me out on my other podcast, UFA, every Tuesday, nine o'clock. Uh, we talk about sports and wrestling. Uh, NFL's not yeah, and wrestling right now. I'm not really there for the wrestling. I'm, I'm probably gonna pop in for one of the wrestling streams. Um, but there's because, wrestling and because this is gonna be the last stream because this Tuesday is gonna be the last one before WrestleMania. Because obviously the before WrestleMania stream and the after WrestleMania stream are gonna be big streams. So I, I'm gonna try and be there. But yeah, check it out. Check out Monkey, Brendan, PJ, Sandman, and the rest of the guys, you know. Uh, Brendan's best bets and everything, you know, I'm when the NFL and all that comes back, you, you want to find out about bets? That's your guy. I'm tell you, mark person. my words. Mark my words. Next fantasy season, I'm taking that belt. I'm taking that belt. Uh, I don't know. I'm going for it, too. I'm Just going for it, too. Carver, I want to take it from PJ. It. Made the best man win as long as it's not PJ. <laughs> I just want everybody to know that's the trope. Uh, unfortunately, PJ yeah. won everything in the seat in the league this year, so we have to. Yeah, so... uh <laughs> I'll never acknowledge him as a tribal chief. <laughs> but all right, guys, that's that's the cast for today. We'll catch you later. later. See you next time. Love, peace, chicken grease. We out.